Do, 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 do. Okay. Testing, testing. Testing, testing. Cool. Um, all right. Uh, The theme is elephant in the room. All right. Um, <clears throat> so, yes, let's make a game. Uh, Thinky Puzzle Game Jam. The theme is Elephant in the Room. I had... I had an idea of a game I wanted to make before, um, before finding out what the theme was. And I was planning on just ignoring the theme entirely, just making what I want to make. Um, but it turns out so the theme is Elephant in the Room. I can't really think of a clever way of interpreting that. I'm thinking of just taking it literally and using the elephant and being like, oh, there's going to be an elephant in my game. Um, maybe I'll manage to make a room in the game as well. Um, but um, strangely enough, the idea of an elephant being in the game actually works quite well with the mechanic that I wanted to do anyway. So I am thinking I will kind of do the plan I was going to do, change it for an elephant, although changing it for an elephant does mean that some of the mechanics I was thinking of wouldn't make any sense. So it's going to have to be a bit different to what I was planning, but I think I can do something with it. Um, anyway, to start off with, let's just set up a puzzle script project. Um, uh, uh, Vicky puzzle game jam. I should probably time myself as well so I don't spend more than 48 hours. Let's put a timer on. Uh, timer. Or oh, not a timer, like a stopwatch. Cool. Go. Right. Uh, sure, whatever. So first thing I want to sort out is um, rigid body stuff. And in which case, I'm actually going to just check the page in the docs about doing rigid bodies because it's always good to refresh on how uh, the docs suggest it be done. I remember I always end up doing it slightly differently, but it's um, good to read through this to refresh. Uh, what, what if we weren't allowed to refer to a crazy... I just remember that this article, the way it's written, this page, is sort of like, oh, here's one way of implementing it. Oh, but that doesn't actually work. And here's another way of implementing it. But that also doesn't work. So I'm just going to keep going through until I... Uh, until I get to the bit that does work. Right, uh, add them to the same rule group, start loop, end loop, and is that the good situation? Here's what code for system several rigid bodies and some, some small blocks looks like. Okay, hold on, let's have a look. Start loop, orange crate, orange crates, yes, they push each other. Orange crate, blue crate, they push each other. Blue crate, orange crates. 
not moving. Uh, yeah, push, blue crate, blue crate, push, and loop. Um, and that works because they're all in the same layer, so if they push into each other, stop. Orange crate, orange crates. This is identical to saying, right, because they put the start loop and end loop around it, so it's the same as putting the plus in front of everything. What does the rigid end up doing again? There are rigid bodies and some small blocks look like this. So in this case, there's a start loop, end loop around the whole thing. Player pushes the small crates, it pushes. Player pushes the red crate, it pushes. Plus rigid, moving. I think rigid means if this fails in some way, the whole thing is cancelled or something's cancelled. Um, moving, red crate, red crate. Moving, red crate, red crate. Right, so that's a red crate, like, that's a, that's one large red crate. It's just red crates, it's being adjacent to each other. And then, uh, a crate moving, any kind of crate moving into a red crate, red crate move, and then this just loops around. Let me remind myself what rigid actually does. Rigid. Do I need to actually end up using it? Rigid object is, is one where if one part can't move, no parts can, and a rigid rule is a rule where if anything it tries to move can't move, then the rule doesn't apply at all. It's one thing box itself is disabled and re-simulates the entire turn. Um, does it just cancel that rule group or just that rule? Crate pushing to a red crate. Basically, we want the red crate to not move if any part of the red crate can't move. So, red crate to not move if any part of the red crate can't move. Uh, let's just jump in and try and implement it, I think. Okay, rigid body. And the other thing is I don't want to have to have separate objects for every rigid body, so I'm gonna do, let's just make this, this level massive. Just starting off with the default script game. Okay, um, let's just make a simple rigid body. Do so sure we'll call it a crate. Why not? And it can be orange. Sure. In which case, I could have just used the letter that's already for crate. Well, I want this to behave as one object and if, okay, so player into crate, pushes the crate, and then, right, okay, so hold on, the movement here is not, it's not if a red crate is pushing into a red crate, it's just if a moving red crate is next to any other red crate, so we'll want to do the same thing. Um, so if we have a moving crate, Adjacent to another crate, then we will make both of them moving in the same direction. Which I believe is what that will do. That is how it was implemented there, right? Yes. So in theory, that already will like do something. Well, if I had a player, that's the default. Okay. If I had a player, we oh we need a target. Otherwise this is gonna end. Okay, if they all move at the same time, if I do this, they'll, they'll do that, they'll deform, which I do not want. I want them to act as a single body. Um, so, if any part of this can't move, there's like a few ways of doing this. I could do the way that the doc suggests, but will it end up being a problem? I guess we could just do it and then see what happens. Um, so, moving crate, crate, moving crate, moving crate. And then, so how was it done in the docs? If, it's just if any part of it can't move. It's interesting that the player and red crate is, is, the player pushing the red crate is included in that rigid, in that rule group. But sure, let's do, like what happens right now if I just do rigid that? I always have to refigure out what these rules actually do. Okay, that doesn't help anything. 
Um, any crate moving through a red crate. Yeah, okay. Um, so what is it that actually ends up stopping these from moving in this? Green red crate. Does those being in a... Yeah, I always have to figure this out. Does, do those being in a room group together make a difference? Yes. Okay, why so? So player pushes the crate, player pushes the crate. Oh, okay, because what was happening was, if I just had that, where it was a rigid move, the one that I was pushing still moved because the player's pushing into it, right. Whereas I need like the player to stop moving as well, which is why we put it into the same rule group as the... The, um, the player moving the crates rule. Right, okay, so... Uh, cool. A simple rigid body. However, um, I would like the ability to... Because right now, like, if I wanted another rigid body next to this one, and I did something like this... That would be problematic because they would just become one rigid body. I want those to be two separate things. What I've ended up doing in the past for this is using like the box drawing characters. Uh, to kind of represent the connectivity between the rigid boxes. So these are pretty good for it. So I could do something like that to be like the cap on the top of that. And then that for being there. There. Uh, where, am I? where is it? Where is it? Where is it? That one to the bottom. Maybe a little overkill to be so precise about everything. No, I guess I can just copy that from there. So again, that one. Again, that one. Still corner going that way. Yeah, these box drawing characters are very handy because um, it also looks, it makes it understandable in the level editor as well. Hmm. Uh, where's the one I'm looking for? That one, I guess. Okie dokie. Um, I am. I am making my own game. Hello. Um, it's for the Thinky Puzzle Game Jam being run by the Thinky Puzzle Game Discord. Uh, I can post a link to it, I guess. Uh, or I can just highlight it on here. Thinky Puzzle Game Jam. Itch. Here we go. Uh, submissions open from today. And it's for a week. Um, but you're supposed to spend 48 hours at most on it. So um, it's like a weekend game jam, but with the flexibility of you can split your time up or whatever. You don't have to do like all nighters or whatever. And the theme is the elephant in the room. So, yeah, I'm making my own, my own game for this. Hopefully going to do most of it today, tomorrow, and Monday. Um, but it probably won't be everything though. So I might have to do some more in the evenings and the rest of the week. Anyway, okay, so I want these to end up being connected rigid bodies. Which is gonna be fun. And I want them to know that, oh, this bit is not connected to that bit. So I want to represent the connectivity at all times and then propagate the movingness along the connectivity. Let's do that. Let's put all the characters in up here. Let's start like that. Start with the caps, I guess. Oh, let's start with the main. Hmm. It's interesting. I don't need to be this precise. Like if I just put a, I just put like a generic connect in all directions one there. Uh, where is it? That one. Like because there's nothing actually adjacent to that space that is connecting to it, that could be enough. 
Let's, let's be precise though, otherwise I'm just going to get confusion later, I think. So, so that is a, I don't even know what these are going to be in the actual game. I guess I was thinking like logs of a tree, but then that, that limits me to only straight lines. Maybe I'll want to do something else. So I guess I'll just keep calling them crates for now, boxes. Um, yeah. Let's go with. Mm, let's go with. Let's just stick with crate for now. We'll change it later. And then I'm going to need some kind of like thing that represents the connectivity between them. Uh, so let's add a new object, which will be like. Uh, um, like rigid up, rigid right. Oh, nice. What jam are you working on? There's like so many jams going on at the same time. And, uh, somebody was suggesting <laughs> making a game for three game jams at the same time. <laughs> Rigid up, rigid right, rigid down, rigid left. Sure. I'll probably regret this name, but I don't really have that much time to think about stuff. Um, so this is going to be a crate and rigid up and rigid right and rigid down and rigid left. And we're going to just put the rest of them in as well. So. Oh, there's so many, so many options. We should just do it though. Then they're all covered. I don't have to worry about it ever again. Rigid up and rigid right and rigid left. Uh, that tab. Uh, let's do the, have some kind of sensible ordering to this. Not that one, that one. Crate and rigid. Up oh, and bridges, right and bridges down. Read it. Read it up. You. Yep. Great and rigid right and rigid down and rigid left. You. Crate and rigid, uh, up and rigid, down and rigid, left. I'm not getting any of these wrong. Okay, so that's all of those. That's all the three directional ones. Now all the two directional ones. Let's start with, start with that one. Crate and rigid, up and rigid, right. Is this overkill? Ah, oh, no, let's just keep going. Let's do it anyway. Uh, up, down, there it is. Crate and rigid, up and rigid, down. Up to left. Crate and rigid, up and rigid, left. Right to down, right to left, right to down, up there. Untitled Game Jam. The theme is retro. I already coded all the logic, so I'm just finishing the last level. Nice. When did it start? And what's your game about? And what's the purpose of Untitled Game Jam? Has it got anything to do with uh, Untitled Goose Game? Is that, I mean, lots of things call themselves Untitled Whatever. Uh, down. Right to left, there we go. Right and rigid, right and rigid, left. And then down left, that's the last one. And then the caps I have to do. Down there. There's the, right, the last one, isn't it, of the twos. Rigid down and rigid left. Caps, okay. 
Let's do the one that's only going upwards to start off with, which is that one. Crates and rigid. Oh. Right. Great and rigid down that one. Also, retro is quite a broad uh, theme for a game jam. The theme for this one is this is already um, elephant in the room, which is. Very interesting. And I'm taking it very literally by just putting an elephant in my game. I think I'm not certain yet. I might ignore. I might end up just ignoring the, the theme, to be honest, since it is optional. But it would be nice to do something that fits with it. So, okay, all that stuff. That is all of them. Oop. Collision layers. Uh, those will all have to go on their own collision layer because. They need to be in the same space at the same time. Technically, I could probably combine it with something else, but these are all going to go away anyway. They're just there because of the basic game. Okay, so. So right now, it should still just kind of look the same. Yeah, and there's still going to be rigid objects. All right. Um, but I'm going to have a nightmare set of uh, rules here. Should be something like, oh gosh, um, I have done this before. I've implemented the previous game where there was like complex rigid bodies like this. Um, yeah, it is quite complicated. So, um, so basically, I want to propagate movement along connectivity in addition to propagating movement in the direction of the movement, regardless. And then if anything can't move, cancel everything. Oh my gosh, that's such a nightmare. Okie dokie. Um, so how do we start off this? I'm just doing everything in plain vanilla puzzle script, at least for now. I might use some um, of the features that are added by other forks later. So, Player push and create, player push and create. So I can't just do this in all directions. I have to only do it uh, along connectivity. So let's say something like, in fact, I don't like some of the keywords being in case of something not. So there we go. So up, moving crates, crates. Uh, ooh, so yeah, okay. So up, moving crates. Uh, rigid up, rigid down. I might as well be, in fact, I have to be precise about this. Maybe. Um, I don't have to be, but yeah, this will be safer at least. Uh, makes a moving crate rigid up and moving crate rigid down. Oh, and those need to be moving as well. Um, Right, so yeah, make everything move basically in the same direction. Rigid right. That's a similar, but right and left. Creates right and left. This is good. This is good. Yes, yeah. Down, create, rigid down, moving into a, well, not moving adjacent to a create rigid up, down and up. Then finally left, rigid left. Well, I don't know when Rigid was added. I mean, it's, it's definitely pretty old now. It's a pretty obscure feature, though. And it's like, it doesn't quite work the way you want it to. It, it, might, it might end up like removing it at some point. Um, but effectively, my understanding is that if 
if any part of this doesn't end up moving, it ends up cancelling the rules. I think that can be good, um, but in some cases it can end up being very inefficient or doing the wrong kind of things, depending on how complex the rigid body situation you're in is. Um, so I'm putting it in for now because I'm basically following what the, the docs say about doing rigid bodies. I vaguely remember that in the past when I've done rigid bodies before, I ended up just completely scrapping the rigid keyword and doing it in a different way where I would like, because I guess the alternative is that you propagate all the movement, you then find out if something can't move, and then you propagate the stop, the stop movement back through all the objects, I guess. Um, so I might end up doing that, but for now I'm going to stick with this. Left, right, left, right. Have I done all this right? Uh, well, if I spelled that correctly. The theory right now, I would at the very least be able to separate that, those three from those. Yes, okay, okay, but then that happens, that's, that's fine. Um, is that fine? Why does that start happening? Why isn't that fun? I can't push that anymore. Push it once and then never again. Oh, because nothing, because not everything moves with it? Is that the issue? Everything's moving though. Moving, 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 moving. Moving, 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 moving. Moving. Yeah. We might need to do a bit of, let's do some red. Maybe there's an obvious reason for this actually. Thought about it enough, but let's just do this anyway for debugging purposes. In fact, let's put red out of the top because it's rigid up. And similar thing here, put it at the bottom. Oh, whoops, that's right. Okay. At the bottom and Let's just see what's going on at the moment. Okay, so down, up, so that all looks connected correctly. So what happens if I do this? Oh, everything becomes bad. Stuff isn't moving. Do I have to specify the specific direction? So that's down. Um, I'm saying if in the down direction, there's an, uh, a rigid down connected to a rigid up, which there is, then move the rigid down. Move the crate and the rigid down and move the crate and the rigid up. Yet that doesn't seem to, that one just, no, that one disappears because it moves down, right? But no, it's gone. Let's just say, let's, let's put the specific direction in and see what happens. Uh, let's just do for all of them, in fact, down. Oh no, but it's not necessarily down. That's a problem. Yes, because I could be sliding this in a different direction. I'd want it to also transfer in that sense. Why? Hold on. Oh. So everything becomes disconnected at that point. That's why it all falls apart. Have I messed up something? Let's just follow through the rules. So at this point, if I press, in fact, let's simplify this. Let's get rid of, or let's put a space between the two. Always simplify the bug before you start uh, debugging it. Let's just work on this one. So we have a crate with a rigid down on it. I can see the rigid down and I, I push it and then that happens. Okay, so player pushes crate, right? The crate starts moving. We then loop through all these and they're in, they've, they've got pluses in front of them. That makes this one entire rule group. So it's going to keep looping through this, all of these rules until it's done. Um, so we have a, which of these ends up matching? Um, 
Well, we don't have a rigid up. So that's not going to match. At least we don't have an, oh, hold on, rigid up in the up direction. So in the up direction, we don't have a moving crate with a rigid up and then a crate with a rigid down. No. In the down direction, we do have a moving crate with a rigid down. Yes, that's that one. With a crate with a rigid up. And we're saying make the crate moving and the rigid down moving and the crate moving and the rigid up moving. And then that happened. Oh no, we've got bugs already. Okay, so let's just see what happens if I do replace. This is just temporary. If I place, uh, oh, hold on. Right, okay, because the motion is not in the same direction as the, yeah, okay, okay, got it. Um, do I have it? No, that's the direction to match the rule. And that is just moving in any direction. Yeah, so we've got the moving crate, rigid down, crate rigid up in the down direction. Okay, in which case, let's just do, uh, let's just say, because it is moving to the right, let's just throw right in everywhere and see if that affects how this works, even though that's not good in general. No, it's exactly the same. Okay. Why do why do they why do those become moving ups? How weird is that? Oh, or rigid ups. They all become rigid ups. Great rigid down. Great rigid up. Well, we're expecting a, a rigid up on the second cell. Cell with the rigid up on it, not on the rigid down cell. Whoa. Let's do this. Uh, what's it called for post logging? Okay. Oh, hello. That might be telling us what's going on. Has an ambiguous movement on the right hand side, moving the copy from the left hand side. For every ambiguous movement associated to an entity on the right, there has to be a corresponding one on the left touch the same entity. Okay, that might be the issue. Or if there's a single occurrence of a particular ambiguous movement on the left, or perhaps the same movement attached to the same object on the right, it seems to be the same. Or something like that. <laughs> Such a good message. Um, okay, so... Just using moving like this is bad. Oh, isn't that just because of that? That's just because of that, right? Yes. Okay. So, logs. Well, 105 applied, 108, 106, 108, 106. 105, of course, we expect that to be applied. Then 108, which is down. Yes, that's the one I'm expecting to be applied. And then 106 applies. Ooh, we go back again. Oh, wait, I've messed that up. Oh, there we go. That's what I've messed up. Rigid up, rigid down, rigid up, rigid down. Of course, I just typoed something. Ah, oh, there we go. There we go. And then, yeah. And these stay separate from each other. But they won't push each other, right? No, okay. So we still have to sort that out. Nice. Do I want to sort that out? Maybe I don't want multi-push. I do want multi-push, for sure. The mechanic that I want to do. Uh, okay, cool. Um, I wish there was a way of like toggling to like a debug sprite. That would be a really nice feature. Um, I guess what I'll do is like something like this. Just leave it in as a comment. It's fairly easy to flip between the two. Cool. And the two separate objects, I mean, it's not clear that they're separate objects when they're next to each other, but we'll sort that out later. Okay, cool. So, next. 
Okie dokie. Um, so we are going to uh, make them push each other. Let's do that now then. Yeah, so the difference between what I'm doing and what the docs say is that the docs have separate objects for each kind of object. So they have a slightly easier situation where it's like, well, you know, red is clearly separate from green because one of them is red crate and one of them is green crate. In my case, I, they're all just crates and I've got these, um, these directional connectivity markers to say what's actually part of the same object. But anyway, okay, so after doing all that, can we basically just say in any direction or in, no, just in the direction of movement, which is, yeah. Okay. In any direction, um, if there is a moving crate moving into a non-moving crate, to a station crate, uh -huh. then we push it. Then it will loop back around and it will propagate again. Yes, there's going to be problems with this, but we'll fix it as we go. I think I will now get multi push. Yes. Okay. And there's going to be problems. There are no problems. Are you kidding? <laughs> it's uh, suspicious. <laughs> it's working too well. I don't like it. <laughs> okay. Um. And then what happens if I've got three in a row? Uh, let's find out. Let's do something weird. Let's do... I could do... I should probably bring all of these symbols down. Let's do that now. It will be handy for the rest of this. So let's do like... Uh, oh, oh no. That. That. In the other thing that I made, I had this kind of rigid body stuff. I also did a thing where I colored each of them dynamically when the level loaded. So I would like send, I'd have like these color markers that I would send to uh, a random crate and then propagate the color along the crate, um, along the like the connectivity between the crates. And then I would, just render that color on top of all of the crates that it propagated to. And then I would send a different color to a different crate, um, which is kind of cool. Is that everything? I feel like I must have lost something in that process, but whatever. We'll stick those in the comments so I can just copy them out of there. Okay. So uh, let's say I want a, let's do a weird, just like block. The uh, uh, two by two Tetris thing. AKA a square. This this should be a perfectly reasonable square, right? Testing. Let's do a bit of testing. And then what happens if we do this? Everything works. <laughs> I guess I'm gonna accept it. Okay. Richard bodies are easy. I was expecting some stuff to like just fall apart, you know? Okay, rigid body done. Um, next thing I want to do. Uh, so should I explain my idea? Who wants to hear my idea? Uh, what I want is, I mean, I'm going to do it on my whiteboard. Um, not the best eraser. Okay. Uh, theory, I can switch the camera only. Whoa. Okay. Um, the plan. The plan is. 
the mechanic I'd like to do, so the thing I was thinking about for a long time actually is, wouldn't it be good if somebody made a puzzle game entirely about like the hookshot mechanic from Zelda? Um, like hookshots are underutilized. There's so much more that can be done with it. Um, so I've had that kind of thing in my mind for ages. The thing I was thinking about doing recently, um, like before I even knew about this game jam happening, um, was just the idea of like there's a player character and they've got a hook shot um, and you can shoot it into blocks, like there could be a block over here, and then pull on those blocks and other stuff. There's other ideas there as well. Um, but basically by being able to manipulate blocks over a long distance, you'll be able to do some interesting stuff. Um, so I've got, I do have like a more detailed idea about what that could look like. But then the theme came up, the theme for this game jam, which is the elephant in the room. And I was sort of like, well, what if this were an elephant and this were its trunk and the elephant's trunk like extends out into the distance and grabs onto stuff. Like it almost is too good to be true. <laughs> so maybe I should just... I mean, yeah, I mean, I don't know why I'm going to redraw it. It's just basically the same concept. It's just not a, a hook thing. It's an elephant's trunk. Um, so what I'm thinking is, obviously that requires directional shooting, like the direction you're going to shoot. Um, it's always a bit, yeah, it's interesting. How do you do like, because you want arrows to just move you around. They involve physics-based puzzles. Um, no, because I guess, so this is just going to be a completely grid-based puzzle game. Um, I mean, there's physics in the sense that you're grabbing onto the thing and then pulling it towards you, but there's nothing that's sticking to the grid. Like, everything's just moving along it, through the cells. Um, I mean, there's definitely potential for also doing hookshot-based physics-based puzzles, um, but this won't be. Um... So because of the directionality of it, there are two things you, I could do. Is one is that like if you if your character is currently facing this way, then turns, and then then you press up, then the character is facing upwards and doesn't move. And that puts it like if you want to move up upwards, that means you have to turn upwards and then go. Um, uh, the other option is that when you press up, you both turn up and move up. That removes some freedom about um, being able to stay in the same place while turning, so you lose a bit of freedom there. And it feels a little like... Um, it's, not, it's not fun when the movement feels like it's, it's constraining you in a way that isn't natural. Like, I should be able to just turn and then look that way. The other alternative is that I do a Stephen Sausage Roll type thing. And I actually occupy two spaces. That would be two cells of the grid, one up here. And when I turn that way, then that sticks up into that space. Um, which is, I guess, it's not an alternative. That's the same as the first one, where you have to, you'd have to first turn and then move that direction. And this is interesting because of, like, I quite like the Steven Sausage Roll movement because you also then have the... Uh, if you press down from here, you don't turn around to face down, you step backwards, and you've got like an extra weird kind of movement there. So I'm thinking the Steven Sausage Roll movement would be interesting. Um, what did... Who was it that made the Portal puzzle script game recently? I'm going to search for Portal. <laughs> We're just going to come up with a lot of stuff. Uh... Right, okay, it was... Who made that one?
Who did make that? We have to just search portal for the squid game. <laughs> Any of those? Is it? When was that? 2019? No, it was this. Why do I forget who does what? Portal. Why is it so hard to find? Ah, it was Vexorian, okay. Furniture Science was the name of it, okay. Uh, here we go. So what, what ended up happening here, because this also has directional movement, this is what I wanted to look at. It doesn't load, oh it does load, it takes a while. Welcome to Redacted Science. Oh, I realise you can't see anymore. Uh, uh, your clearance level is so low, blah blah blah. Okay, so it, it looks like turning happens immediately. Let me play a little bit further into the game. Uh, does this work? Do I have to like put you up in there? Oh no. <laughs> oh, that's fine. That's not fine. That's, that's fine. So I can go around and push you to the side. Okay, let's get to the bit with the, where the portal gun comes into things. Uh, there's the portal gun. How does it work? Oh. Okay. So once I've got that, which I don't have yet, by the way, there we go. After aiming, press X to shoot. So it ju you just turn when you turn, okay. I guess they just changed the levels to to work with that. That does make it feel a bit nicer to move. At the same time, the other good thing about you know, the Steven Sausage Roll to like taking up two grid spaces is that um, elephants are pretty big. <laughs> so if I'm going to draw an elephant, it would maybe make sense to take up two spaces. And also, like the feeling of like heavy movement, maybe is appropriate for an elephant. I think I'm going to do the steam sausage style thing. Okay, it also sounds like it'd be quite interesting to implement. So, how do I want to do this? Um, I think what I'm going to do is is have a kind of Okay, I might as well use both spaces. I was thinking, like, should I just make the player marker, like, say whether it's st whether it starts pointing up, right, down, or left? I could put... Uh, I could just put a thing next to it, though, to say which way it's going. Obviously, I'm not sure what will happen if they're separate, but I guess I just won't ever do that. So P for the player, and then... Well, it's going gonna, it's gonna to be an elephant, so let's do elephant. Is it going to be an elephant? I might change my mind about that. Stay with me. Okay. Um, the other thing can just be Q, because P and Q are next to each other in the alphabet. Uh, so, I want this to end up being a right-facing player holding a thing. Okay, so... Uh, Ah, I don't like how it changes the whatever. Well, change it. Um, like this, the case of the color. Uh, okay, so. 
Um, if play is blue, let's just make a thing. Well, I need to give it a name. Uh, let's just call it trunk as though it's going to be a trunk. It probably will be a trunk. And give it a color for now. It doesn't matter what it is, really. It's yellow. Um, and then, in fact, well, I've called it Q, so whatever, let's just stick with it. The naming is going to be horrible. Who cares? Um, Because the only thing that matters is the like relative position of these two things, and that decides the current state of the game, like the start of the game. Um, yeah. Am I gonna want to? I'm never gonna have a situation where the elephant's separated from the trunk. That would be weird. That would be funny. It'd be kind of horrible. It would just look more like a bug than an actual feature, so I think I won't do it. Uh, although it does sound quite entertaining. Uh, going on here. Ooh. Right, I just saw that Volian has joined the Thinky Puzzle Game Discord. Welcome. If you're still watching. Um, okay, so. So, P and Q, how do I want to represent this? I need a direction, but the direction is just already captured in the orientation of the P and the Q relative to each other. So maybe I don't actually need to represent the direction. Maybe I should just think about like, this, the cases of movement. That's not going to be right eventually. It's going to be like need to be player or the other thing, but that's that's okay for now. Um, in fact, hold on, I could combine that and that. Yeah, okay, I'll do that later. So, um, where to begin with this? So. There's, there's going to have to be like lots of special rules here, I think. Or are there? So you can represent perpendicular direction, the direction that the rule is applying. So what would that look like? So let's, let's, just, let's just try and do a very specific rule right now. In the right-hand direction, if there is a player followed by a trunk, Uh, if there's a player followed by trunk, and the player is moving, let's just go in the same direction as the trunk for now, and we'll try and simplify the rules later. Um, then the player and the trunk both move in that direction. Um, and with that, we will be able to do, uh, trunk's been defined, not assigned to a layer, same layer as the player will. Great. Do. Uh, Nothing move. Player trunk. Oh, because I did not put the thing in. Oops. Okay, cool. And I can't. I can just leave my trunk behind. <laughs> cool. Um, and then, so I'm, okay. What I'll do is I'll focus purely on I'm um, in this orientation, and I'll think about how to um, change that. So still going in the right direction. If the player's moving in the opposite direction, the trunk comes with. And there will always be space for it to move into because it's moving into the space that the player is coming from. So we can move back and forth. Cool. Then, um, if it's uh, orthogonal in that direction, then ooh, we're gonna have a rule that like it needs to like rotate. You can't do two-dimensional rules in this as well. So this is gonna be interesting. Uh, Hmm. How best to represent it. I'm going that way. I want the trunk to spin around. I, I'm also going to think about it needs to push stuff while it's spinning, but I'll come to that afterwards. The trunk to spin around. Uh, so I actually don't want the player to move. The player does not end up moving in that situation. The trunk ends up 
above the player. So I need to basically take the trunk away from there and put something on the player that says, okay, after this is done, let's move the, the trunk into... Uh, what if I just... What if I just move... Oh, that's an interesting idea. Just put the trunk on top of the player, which I can't because we're on the same layer. I could change the layer. This is a little bit of a hacky way of doing it as well. It would feel nicer if I just had like a marker. It's just that adding extra objects does complicate things as well. And I, it is easier to keep those on the same layer. Let's do a marker. Oh, I suppose I could do that. No. Yeah. Yes, maybe. I was thinking I could put an action. I could put an action on the player. And the direction, and then remove it afterwards. That's kind of hacky. Like, I pretend that the player has pressed X, and that they've also moved that direction. Well, so I'm, yeah, so I'm not removing that direction, basically. And then afterwards, I go, uh, if there's a player, if there's a moving player in any direction with an action on them, Then, and there's a space in front of them with no, um, we'll do it like this for now, no wall, no crate. Then, uh, we take away all the stuff, we play a trunk. Oh, this will probably work, but it's kind of... The, oh, no, so you can't do action and movement, right, yes, I forgot about that. And I can't, yeah, I can't just stick movement back on the player. Let's just do it the simple way. Let's use markers, uh, trunk up. Trunk, uh, rotate up, I'll call it for now. I might end up needing other trunk directions. <laughs> Rotate right down. This is going to be such a complex set of mechanics to implement. Like not just this bit, but all the other stuff I'm thinking about. Okay. Uh, so. So. Um, in this situation, let's not do the action stuff anymore. Let's. Player trunk, we get rid of the trunk, we stop the player from moving, but we put a trunk rotate up on top. Uh, and these can all be on the same layer, so trunk up, trunk rotate, right? They can in theory be on the same layer as the rigid stuff. Or it's like one of the rigid things. Maybe I'll do that actually. Screw it, why not? I don't know that should ever be a problem. Okay. That's gonna end up being a problem <laughs> eventually. <laughs> Uh, and then, later on, I would do trunk rotates up. Hmm, I could, I could put the direction on the trunk. Okay, that's a better idea. Let's just do a trunk rotate only. Because I think I can get away with that. I don't think I need separate markers for each direction. So, trunk rotates. Sometimes it's hard to know whether you're going to need markers for each direction or later. Trunk rotates up. Uh, so it's not trunk rotates. Uh, so it's okay. So it's this, like that, and then in whatever direction the trunk rotate wants to move, and, and there's no wall, no crate in front of it. Uh, then we uh, we get rid of the trunk rotates. It's gone, and we put the trunk up there. Each rule, each pattern. Uh, what have I messed up? All oh, right. That. Oh, it rotates, but only, <laughs> only once. <laughs> All right, uh, so then similarly, there would be a... Can I do... I can, can't I? Uh, how do you do... What's the word for, like, orthogonal movement? It's not just orthogonal, is it? It is, okay. Okay.
And that should now do both directions. It does. It does. I can now do up and down. Cool. It's nice when it's something as simple as that. Now, in theory, all these rules would work in all the other directions. So, I feel like this is not going to be right, but... I can't move anymore, but I can rotate in all directions, which is nice. Okay. <laughs> Why can't I move anymore? Play trunk, surely that should happen. Move. Orthogonal. Oh, right, because... Ooh. So what's happening is... Sure, I am pushing the trunk. Then later on, a rule comes along that is like... Up. No, but I'm not moving on the Okay. That shouldn't even match. That shouldn't have a good strong rotation up here. So let's, let's just look at what the rules are that are happening. So when I just press forwards, so what happens? One, one, two applies, right? Trunk is now moving. One, one, four, right applies. And there's no orthogonal movement. Why you do this to me? Oh, but there, no, there, there's, there's no, there's no direction where that's a thing. And I'm moving orthogonally. I'm, I'm going that way. That's weird. That is orth oh, orthogonal. Wait, what does orthogonal mean? Oh, orthog Not even listed. Ah. Bird's eye view rules. Orthogonal? Nope. Puzzle script. Oh, script. Orthogonal. There we go. Okay, so orthogonal just means in all directions. Oh, yeah, that's not what I wanted. Is there a way to mean... Uh, yeah, okay, there's a perpendicular, okay. And I can move. There we go, look at that. Steven Sausage Roll movement. Yay. Nice. Uh, but this stuff won't work. I just lost my trunk, it's gone. Okay. Oh, what just happened there? Was that normal? Yes, that was normal, okay, cool. Interesting. Fun. So that's with that. Uh, I wish this didn't wrap. Uh, well, maybe actually wrapping is quite good. <laughs> um, neat. So now what I need is also to make those things push. Like right now, this will still push. Uh, yeah, we can still push this stuff around with my butt, but not with my trunk. And if I rotate my trunk into the thing, I lose my trunk. That is problematic. So um, I need to start renaming stuff. So this isn't just if a player push, pushes a crate. This is if anything moving pushes a crate. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to rename this to dynamic. I, I did that for the collaborative game that we're working on in the, in the Thinky Puzzle Game Discord. Uh, and I, I thought it was a quite a good idea. So dynamic is anything that can move effectively, uh, which would be player or trunk or crates. Then what I want to do is say if anything dynamic is pushing, anything else. No, let's, stick, let's just keep this about crates. Okay. Great, rigid, great movement. 
Okay, so we've got dynamic, and then... Uh, why did I do that? Because I was going to use it somewhere. Say, if... I mean, so effectively we do need a rule that is like, if dynamic is pushing... I mean, that's what we've got there. Oh, ooh, we need to make sure that's dynamic, otherwise I'm just trying to place them in players all the time. Where do all those spaces come from? Uh, pushing crates. I guess that's enough. There's not, not anything else we're pushing. So the problem is that the trunk, yeah, the trunk will now push stuff. Okay, I'm overthinking stuff. Yeah, okay. Uh, but it won't do on rotation still. I can still push stuff with my butt. Yeah, but rotation still loses. Okay, so when rotating, um, so it's in this situation when I'm moving perpendicular to the direction that the trunk is in, I'm going to swing round before I swing round. So before I do this, in fact, I need to do a check uh, to push something. So maybe what I do is I expand this into multiple rules and say, so it's effectively a, a, a movement in the direction that I'm already wanting to move. I wish it didn't put them in lowercase. There we go. Oh, 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 perpendicular trunk. I'll do that for now. I could remove the player perpendicularity here. Let's not though, let's keep it in. Perpendicularity, is that a word? Uh, and then just, uh, I need to not lose what the original rule was. Let's just copy that down here for now. So, a particular trunk. Uh, and then player, perpendicular trunk. Uh, that needs to be perpendicular player. Perpendicular. I've done that wrong. So the perpendicular trunk is gone there. Yep, okay. Then we need to move stuff. Yeah. Okay, so if we have a trunk moving into a dynamic, I'll just say dynamic, it's never going to be the player, so it should be fine. He says, trunk dynamic, uh, trunk dynamic. And in theory, I can now ooh, ambiguous movements. Is it that? No, that's the same direction we're moving. This. I'm on one eight. I'm on eight. Oh, hold on. I didn't finish doing this. Um, so then we've got perpendicular. Trunk, perpendicular trunk. Uh, I'm going to change that to be that. I mean, that's right, isn't it? Perpendicular trunk. Expect that to still be perpendicular. Yeah, uh, perpendicular. Oh, because I don't have a trunk rotate. And there's two on the left. That's the issue. Do I necessarily care about both these anymore? I don't do it. Uh, this is going to get messy, but okay. Any problems. But okay, that pushes. Nice. Well, I lost the trick. <laughs> Why is that bad? Because it's moving into the place, okay, because of the, the ordering of when things move. Yeah, okay. This is going to get complicated. Basically because I'm moving the trunk into the space where the crate is, and they're on the same layer, so they get destroyed. The trunk, the trunk gets destroyed. Um, yeah, and then the crate moves afterwards. Okay. Almost certainly some of these already 
done a <laughs> multiple Steven Sausage Roll uh, remakes in this, uh, but I'm figuring it out from scratch. That would be a good way of doing that. So I effectively want, I want to do that push. I want to apply the movement to that thing, but I want the, um, oh my God, what happens if, I don't know, okay. If the push works, then there's always space. That's not true. Well, oh yeah, okay, so we've got situations like this as well. Oh no, this is going to be such a nightmare. <laughs> okay, so if I'm like this, then one of the objects needs to push up, the other one needs to push left. Oh, this is going to be gross. Oh boy, so you can get multiple movement at the same time. At least it's orthogonal, like perpendicular move, not opposite directions at the same time, because that's even worse. Um, I need a better way of thinking about this. Right, because that, that should also push left. So basically that should push left if there's something still left in that space. But we don't know if something's left in that space because we haven't moved the thing yet. Do I have to do everything in like multiple steps, maybe? Do everything in multiple steps. Or do I need to implement the movement myself? I probably do need to implement the movement myself. Because I want to shift everything and then see if it's gone. Because I don't yet know if the thing I'm pushing actually has been able to move. So, when, so what I could do is that I swing the trunk, the stuff moves, I then do rigid crate movement, no, because that doesn't, we don't, we never end up saying to stationary. I'm going to have to do the movement myself. Do, 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 do. Okay, uh, let's simplify stuff again. Let's go back to, let's get rid of this stuff. Let's remove the trunk. Back to just the rigid body. That's supposed to be re rectangular. Rid of the trunk. Um, so we're back to just this. Let's do the movement and the blocking ourselves. I think it's necessary, sadly. Um, okay, so. Dynamic, moving to a crate, moves the crate. I think this can pretty much stay as it is. And then we're gonna re-propagate the movement back up. Yeah, okay, okay. Um, I knew this was going to happen. <laughs> it happened the last time I did rigid body stuff. So, that pushes crate. Then we propagate movement along the rigid connections. And then we crates push other crates effectively. I guess that could just be dynamic pushes and dynamic, but you, I guess we'd be checking for more stuff. Too. Should. We'll think about that later. Um, so then I sort of want to know, is anything unable to move at this point? What's the best way to check that? Um, well, if for crate to know if it can't move, it can't move if there's a wall in front of it. That's one situation where it can't move. Yes. Or anything static. Let's make a static thing. Just in case later on there's other static stuff. Dynamic static. Wall. Just wall for now. Um, if there's anything static in front of it, we need to remove the movement and then propagate the movement. That's not too bad. We can do that. So after all this is done, we could probably get rid of the rigids. Let's get rid of the rigids. Uh, 
Um, after all that's done, then we go, is the removing... Let's do, let's just do any dynamic. There's a new dynamic into a stationary static, which they should always be stationary, but whatever. We'll be precise. Dynamic into a stationary static. Uh, then we want the dynamic to be stationary to station. Stationary dynamic. Uh, yep. Static. Then I want to propagate that back up. Yeah, there's going to be a lot of looping here, but whatever. It's going to be fine. It's going to be totally fine. Um, so similar to this, effectively, uh, here. And with that in, because then that will propagate it from crate to crate. Yes. Uh, no, it won't. Stationary anything. Stationary dynamic or static. So if the thing that's in front of it is not moving, then at this point, then we have a problem. Yes? Well, unless it's like, oh yeah. Uh, unless it's like something on the floor or something that's not supposed to move. Then no. But we do want, if it's a stationary static or a stationary dynamic, then we want to stop. I could just put it at the end. So I'll use that to be that. So, okay, up, station creates, let's just do this. And then we can say if it's a moving crate, and we just get rid of the movingness. Uh, and on the rigid down as well. Okay, station creates, up, moving crate, move, yep, station re. re up. Oh, in fact, I need to keep that in mind here then. The dynamic is moving into static. Oh, there's so much stuff to do here. Okay. I could just do that with a rule that says we have a station crate with a rigid of any kind on it. Oh, that's going to be a problem. It's a keyword. That's, I was, I've been planning to do this anyway. Let's rename all these to a uh, rigid connector or something. But now let's just do this. Because <laughs> I think this will be bad, right? But maybe it'll work, let's see. Down, rigid left. Rigid, rigid, rigid everywhere. Um, I think I can complain about this, but we'll see. Rigid is a keyword. Uh, stationary crates. Uh, please don't change my casing. Station oh, that's not on a different cell, it's the same cell. Okay. This is definitely going to be looping too much, but um, I'll sort it out afterwards. Dynamic, stationary, static, stationary, dynamic, stationary, static. Yep. Uh, stationary, crates, moving, rigid, stationary, crate, stationary, rigid. Then we propagate stationary, crate, rigid, moving, crate, yep, stationary, and then everything was stationary. The rigid is already stationary, so good. In fact, I don't have to do that. I might as well, and then that rule doesn't have to run a million times. Um, so then similar. So it's it's stationary with movings on the right and then stationary is in both. Okay. Moving. Stationary. And then stationary, stationary. Stationary moving on the right. Stationary, 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 no, no, we don't need that station. Uh Stationary moving on the right. Stationary. Stationary. And then, and then I want to do 
if it's like it's very similar to that rule these might end up getting combined to one rule but it's if a crate is moving into a station crates yeah and we become stationary if i mess this up this is not gonna work yeah it's still gonna play the game okay so that seems to work what have I broken? Anything? Is that gonna work? It appears to be working. Uh, I just finished the level. Oops. Um, once again, surprised that that is working at all. Okay. In that case. So I've implemented movement myself. I guess just to test, what I could do is I could move wall into a different layer. Because now the collision layer is not going to do any kind of collision at all. It's be entirely based on my rules. And yeah, it seems to work. Okay. Cool. Neat. Uh, ooh. Vision create movement. That's, that's okay. So that's... Comment this nicely. Rigid, create movement, uh, propagate, proper, propagate movement through rigid crates. Propagate, uh, stop movement through rigid crates. That can definitely be nicer but we'll think about it later, I guess. Okay, so now we're doing our own movement and stopping. Also a different layer. Why is that useful? Because, hmm, that's not, what I, that's not the entire thing I wanted to do. How necessary was doing that? Not massively. Could have left that as it was. No, I don't want to mix. I don't want to mix built-in movement with non-built-in movement. I'm going to have to do some non-built-in movement. I think this is a good thing to have done. Uh, it, but I also then want to also do, uh, if I have a moving dynamic, moving into a space. I mean, if it's, if it's still moving, it's in theory still allowed to move. So I think I'm going to leave that rule like that. Dynamic, uh, dynamic. So I'm going to move things myself. That should still work. It does not still work. Uh, I become one with Thing because player is player is dynamic. Uh, the player's pushing on that. We both become moving. Oh no, because we're not overwriting each other. We're on different layers that wouldn't happen, I guess. I want everything to be on a different layer. That's also going to be a problem if, yeah, they and everything ends up consuming everything in front of it. <laughs> That's not good. But they can't be on different. Ah, uh, this isn't going to work. How have I done this before? Dynamic moving into no space. When rotating, I want to nudge stuff. And when rotating, I want to nudge stuff, and it pushes, and it does all this propagation. Maybe I go back to what I had. Maybe I can make it work with what I had before. Yeah, probably. Okay, so what I'll do is I will 
make a copy of this or I'll just like comment it out. You can do nested comments, right? Yeah, okay. Uh, but I'll also do this, so that'll do a lot. Uh, as far as I can undo. <laughs> Okie dokie, that's as far as I can undo. Oh well, well it's just this. I can get rid of that. And then put the rigids back in. Okay, back to where I was. Uh, and then don't forget to paste that back in. Let's try and make it work with the built-in movement. We'll make things a bit easier, I guess. Okay, so this is all good at the moment. Okay. So let's bring this back in. Let's just make it work with the way it was. Uh, I don't have a trunk, so bring the trunk back in. What's the problem? The problem is that I need to exert movement on that, but I need to know whether that's able to move before I actually do the rotation. That's the fundamental thing. If that isn't able to move, like if we're in this situation, and that's not able to move, I don't want to be able to rotate, otherwise I'm rotating through the thing. Mm hmm So. So. So exert the movement, don't rotate yet. I could do like a multiple turn thing, but I don't want it to be visible because I'm definitely going to have multiple turns at certain points anyway. Like you can use it again to like make another turn happen. But I'm going to want to use that for animation. So I want there to be some time between each of the agains. So I don't want to use it again here. What I want to do is exert the movement, do all the movement propagation. If, if the movement is happening, rotate the trunk and apply additional movement. There's like two steps of movement to do. Maybe I can do it in a loop. Start loop, end loop. See how that goes. This is going to be nasty. Okay. Um, but I don't want to actually do, do the rotation yet. Let's then comment that out. Let's just say perpendicular player of trunk, perpendicular player. Let's just get rid of the trunk rotate entirely. Now, do this. Uh, yeah, we'll get rid of all of this for now. At this point, um, this happens. <laughs> we just slide horizontally and then my trunk disconnects from me. Yeah. So I want that pushing to happen. Then regardless of what happens in that situation, if I have like a particular movement on the player in the trunk, I don't want it to happen ever. I, I can never want the sliding to happen. So after all this has happened, let's just remove perpendicular movement from. I wish the casing would stay this uh, on both the player and the trunk. I realize the thing looks like an elephant right now, but one day well, okay. So we're sliding the thing and we're not moving. That's cool. Because then what we can do is like, basically after that's moved, we can see that it's moved. Yeah, this is good. This is very good. See that it's moved. Um, because now the space that the trunk is trying to move into, or was trying to move into, is now available. So then we know we can do the rotation. We don't know we can do the rotation because we also have to try and push the object that's going to be in the space above the player. Okay. Okay. 
only after that movement happens can we know if we've rotated, if both those spaces are free at that point. Ooh. All right. Perpendicular player, perpendicular trunk, we removed them. Now we don't know which way we were moving. So we actually want to do the check before this, I guess. Um, So at this point, if the trunk is moving into a space that does not have... Oh no, so the problem is that they haven't actually moved yet at this point. They just are moving. How do I know... Actually, I need to debug something here. So, okay, so if... Like, how does rigid work? Does it actually get rid of the movement? So if I do uh, trunk... Uh, to say stationary crates, and then just, let's just get rid of the trunk. Uh, uh, the crate can stay, I guess. Oh, whoops. I suppose I can't move right now. Uh, uh, I guess I could just set up a different example. So right now that pushes, that's good. But if there's a stationary crate, we're gonna get rid of the trunk. So what if I extend this up one more? Against the wall. If that happens. And now I'm free, I'm free from my trunk. Um, it did get rid of the crate, but is that just because it moved into the same layer as so we got rid of the trunk. Yeah, I think that is. So that, that has detected. Let's, let's do a better version of that. Let's just throw in a uh, debug red on the top layer. Debug. Debug. No, no, not that. Debug. Does this rule see that as stationary? It does. Okay, that's nice. That's very nice. Um, I'll leave that debug marker in there. That'd be useful, I think. So, sees the crate as stationary. Um, uh, sees the crate as stationary. And therefore, I don't move any further. That's the, the thing. <laughs> okay. If it's not stationary, then I do move further. I attempt to, well, I don't necessarily, but I attempt to now check if I can move the next thing. Wow. Okay. Okay. This is reasonable. This is doable. I might just end up copying a bunch of, of lines and just running them twice effectively. But if the, okay, so if there's not a stationary crate in front of the trunk now, you can basically move the trunk into that position and then give it movement going, oh, it's not going to know which way to go. Why don't I just... What do I want to do? Uh, okay. If there's a stationary crate, then we have to we have to abort everything we're doing. If not a stationary crate, then I guess what we could do is just pop a, a thing down that's going to now be the movement. But how's it going to know which way it's going? 
Or I could pop the thing down on the player. Just move orthogonally to the player and then just do it on the space that I've plopped the thing down. But I kind of don't, I don't mind that. That sounds all right. Then I have to go through a weird loop. Hmm. So, okay, so what I effectively want is a trunk. If a trunk is moving, in, moving into a moving crate, I don't see why it would move, be moving any other direction, but we'll do this anyway. Trunk is moving into a moving crate, um, then we don't need the deep thing anymore. We want the trunk. Trunk's not actually going to move, we're going to remove it later. Um, let's put a marker down on the trunk that says. Easy. Is easy. This is easy. Okay. And then we are going to put a marker down there. Let's get another marker, which is. Oh, I guess we've already got a trunk rotate. Maybe we can just use that. What layer is trunk rotate on? Fine. Is that fine? Mm. Yes, that is fine. Okay. Okay, so if uh, the player is moving perpendicular and the trunk is there, then we also say the trunk is moving perpendicular. We then try and push stuff. We then say if the trunk is pushing into a moving crate, and we keep the trunk, of course, for now. Or do we? Or do we get rid of it at this point? No, we keep it, although, cause otherwise we'll have to put it back in if everything fails. So we'll keep it for now, and we'll keep it moving. Um, but we'll put a... thing down. Oh. Yes, okay, we'll put a trunk rotate down on the, the trunk. We'll propagate it back to the player, and then we'll go perpendicular, we'll go in the direction the, the player's moving. That should work. Okay. Uh, so yeah, you stay moving. I mean, I think they would stay moving anyway, even if I didn't do that. After that, we propagate it back to the player. So uh, we have a situation where there's a perpendicular player. It's just this situation. Uh, right, so let's just use that line. Perpendicular player, perpendicular trunk. And we're going to put oh, with a trunk with a trunk rotate on it. I could just remove that if it can't move. Why don't I do that? Yes, that is fine. So if it's stationary crates, trunk, stationary crates, trunk. Remove the movement, mm, then how do I know that it's rotating? We could be in a weird situation where. No, we couldn't, because the player's moving perpendicularly. The player wants to rotate. And the trunk doesn't. Yeah, that's fine. Okay, so stationary trunk. So now we see. Are they still perpendicular with each other? If they are, we put a rotate trunk. Trunk rotates, what's it called? Trunk rotates on the player. And then we follow the direction of the player. Whichever way the player is moving with a trunk rotate on it. If there is a dynamic object in that direction, we attempt to move it. Which way is the question? I know which way in this particular situation. What if we're in the other situation? Am I going to need a marker that says what direction? Probably. 
Yeah. Yeah, you know, aren't I? Or can I can I just say which direction the chalk was in? The chalk was on the right, then was sliding to the left. The chalk was to the north, was sliding down. Yes, I can just put the direction that the chalk was in. Yeah. Uh. Okay, let's do that. I need this anyway. So yeah, this is not the direction we're rotating. So okay, well, let's change this to be a. There'll be four of them. There'll be up. There'll be a right. There'll be a down and a left. And we shall. All on the layer, trunk rotates, equals trunk rotate up, or trunk rotate right, or trunk rotate down. It's going to be sad if I implement this and it turns out there aren't that many good puzzles to do. I think that will be feeling fairly confident about that. Um, so, yes, so I'm not just putting a trunk rotate down, I'm putting a particular trunk rotate down, and it depends on the direction that the trunk is in, so I'm just going to have to do separate rules for each direction here. Up. Yep. Uh, player rotate up. Trunk. Yeah, that's fine. Oh well. Right. It's the direction the trunk was in, so the opposite direction is the direction we want to push. Okay. So if we have a player with a trunk rotate, the dynamic, what well, depends on the particular trunk rotate, so again, I need a rule for each one. So if we have a player with a trunk rotate up, there's a dynamic in front of it, and then we're pushing the dynamic down. We're going to attempt to. I, uh, keep the player moving for now, I guess. Player, trunk rotates. Oh, we'll just keep everything on. We'll move stuff later. But down, down, and then I could probably limit what the set of directions this could be happening in. Players either try to move left or right, so I could say horizontal. Let's not do that for now. <laughs> Let's make it better later. Down, dynamic, okay. So then similar for the others. So if the trunk rotate right, then the trunk rotate right, but we move left. If the trunk rotate uh, down, down, up, oh. rotate left, Left. Uh, right. So then we we'll try and move that thing that way. Now for now, I'm just going to copy paste this. Reapply rigid movement. Going to be a better way of doing it. Um, reapply. Cool. Oh my gosh. So then at this point, if the thing that we've just tried to move can't move, although I only need to do this if any of the trunk rotating is happening, we don't need to do a second step of movement unless rotation is a thing, in which case I could prefix all of these with trunk rotate. Yes. Hopefully this is the only way that second can happen. 
we need all of these rules? I don't even know. Not the same as that rule it is, basically, but we'll fix it later. Uh, you go there, you go there. None of this will happen unless the trunk is actually rotating. But save some rules in the other situation. Uh, uh, uh. The gear that's copy and pasted, so maybe I'll, I don't know. Figure it out. Uh, ridge crate movement applies if there's a trim rotate happening. We then cancel the trunk rotation if there's still a thing there. So if we have a player. Moving in a certain direction with a trunk rotate on top of it. It doesn't really matter which direction the trunk rotate is. And there's a stationary dynamic next to it. Then we want to cancel the trunk, trunk, the trunk rotate, which I'll represent by just removing the trunk rotate object, I guess. Okay. Yep, 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 yep. I'll keep the player movement in for now. I'll cancel this to rotate. Stationary dynamic. If, the, if we then have a perpendicular moving, perpendicular moving player with no trunk rotate and it's and we're applying in the direction where there's also a perpendicular trunk, which is still moving perpendicular, right? Not. Wait, where, where did this come from? What is this? Trunk stationary crate. Oh, I've lost track of what everything is. This is the stuff I just did. Yes, okay. Also, I've already removed the stationariness from trunk in that situation. I need to. Yeah, I did. Okay, I did because that cancels that. Okay. Uh, let's leave a comment. Um, if trunk is immediately blocked, uh, we remove its motion. And then this is the bit where we just propagate the, uh, the, the, the movement into the right space. Dynamic, then we reapply that stuff. Then we go. If we've got, the player's got a trunk rotate on it and there's a stationary dynamic, then we stop, we get rid of the trunk rotate. Uh, and we... If you apply no trunk rotate with a trunk, then regardless of what happens, we just need to stop. Every stop. Stationary player, stationary trunk. Trunk may have already had its movement removed, but that's fine. But I want to do that anyway, actually. I want to remove. Yeah, okay. Well, let's just see what happens with this. It's going to be such a nightmare. Nothing works. We can move backwards. Backwards only. <laughs> That's not good. Okay. Well, that wasn't going to work, was it? What's the stuff that I removed here? Oh, uh, yeah, that was the old rotations. Oh, I'm not actually doing the rotation. That's why. I've removed the trunk rotation. Also, why can't I move forward? Let's figure that out. Oh, I can't. But not if I've moved. Oh, no, I can't. Just not if I've done the rotation. The rotation's messing stuff up. I can move forward and backwards. That's fine. Uh, if I do a rotation first, then I can't move forwards anymore. Yeah. That space. Um, yeah, clearly something's been left in a bad state there. 
So. Uh, let's just finish off what I think I need to do and then debug what's going on. So um, at this point, I've stopped them both from moving. But in the situation where we are still rotating, then okay, so where there still is a trunk rotate, and there's a trunk, we get rid of the trunk. Perpendicular, perpendicular player, trunk rotate. We keep the trunk rotate for now, get rid of the trunk, you're gone. Uh, that's it. And then perpendicular. No, no longer perpendicular. In the direction that the player is moving. And we have a trunk rotate still. We place a trunk there. Uh, what are we doing? There's currently nothing there, in theory. There should be nothing there. Uh, player is going to stop moving. Player. I'm going to get rid of the trunk of tape because we're done. I'm going to put the trunk there. Doesn't work. Perfect. Let's also get rid of that just so that I can. I can. Okay, I can still shove things upwards, but. Whoa, I've got two trunks now. That's not intended. <laughs> oh no, now I've got three. This is not doing what it's supposed to do. Now I've got four and five. Uh oh. <laughs> okay, let's debug. Holy moly, this is getting messy. Okay, uh, so let's just do normal. Normal sidestep, or not sidestep, like forward backwards motion. Rule 130 applies. The most basic rule to apply, 131 for going backwards. Okay. Let's do rotating upwards. So the rotating isn't happening. Let's find out why. So only two rules ran. 132, perpendicular player, trunk. Perpendicular player, perpendicular trunk. Cool. Then 147 applied, which was, ooh, only here. We didn't end up actually... In the rotation. So right perpendicular player, perpendicular trunk, player, trunk rotate right, trunk, yes? Okay, so then why does this stuff not happen uh, down here? Perpendicular player, perpendicular trunk. So nothing else ran at that point. So we have a player with a trunk rotate right and a trunk next to it. Yes. Down here. Oh. That doesn't get rid of the movement, does it? The movement should stay. I think. What does that get rid of? I have to put stationary to get rid of it. I think it's still there. Just can test in a second. So at that point, I have a rotate on the player. All this rigid motion should need to happen. Oh wait, hold on, hold on. 147. Yes, that propagates the, the trunk's direction onto the player. Then, then one of these should run. Player with a trunk rotate right. The dynamic, mm, that's a problem. There isn't a dynamic there. No, that's fine, because this is propagating the movement. Okay, that's fine. Then we still should have a rotate right on a moving player. Then that should be skipped, because none of that should be relevant. In fact, it is skipped. And then a player with a trunk rotate right. Oh, yeah. A stationary dynamic? No, that's not happening. We still have. So that doesn't happen. A particular player, no trunk rotate. That doesn't happen, because we have a trunk rotate. A particular player, trunk rotate, trunk. This should happen. It does not. Perpendicular player trunk rotates. This doesn't happen, weirdly. And I think the extra trunks that are spawning are because of this rule. Probably. 167? Has 167 happened? I spammed a lot. 
uh, yeah, 1677. Cool. So that's as expected. Um, so the problem is that that's not moving. Is that, uh, oh, that's not running. So is it just the, this doesn't remove the movement. I mean, I'll put it in anyway, just to be explicit. I want all that movement to stay. Am I just completely forgetting how puzzle script works? If it didn't specify the movement. Oh, I guess that is it. We I can spin around. Can I push that? I can push that. Now what happens if I try and push it again? I'm blocked. Oh, that's that's not good. <laughs> okay, I found another bug. That's we're getting there. This is like almost right. Okay, that's wrong. I'm moving in the wrong direction, but that works. Oh, look at that. I'm not just making Steven Sons wrong again, I swear. <laughs> that is the movement that Steven Sons Roll uses. Okay. We are getting there. Neat. Okay. Yeah, that's the bug. Okay, so there's, very, there's a very clear bug there. It's when, ooh, we've got caught looping lots. There's another bug. There's two bugs. Oh, that's a fun one. I'm splitting the object apart because of the double rotation. Uh-oh. <laughs> Interesting. That's going to be weird. Oh no, this is going to be problematic, but okay. Because I know in that situation it's going to move. Okay, let's just fix the... Let's just set this up into a bug situation. So I think a bug situation would be... This? No, that's fine. That's not fine. Okay. So that's... Probably the minimal situation is that followed by... Always creates the minimal. That's supposed to be rectangular. Yeah, okay, we have a book there. That's fine, that's not fine. Let's fix that. So, what rules apply? One, three, two. Perpendicular player, drunk, perpendicular player, perpendicular drunk. Perfect. That's exactly what I want to happen. Um, one, three, eight applies. Bridge of movement. Ready. I haven't even pushed anything. Oh, this is the thing that pushes it, right. We have a dynamic pushing a crate. Yeah, of course, this makes sense. Yep. We have a dynamic which is the trunk and the player. Oh, I don't actually want the player to push. Because that would result in... I go into this situation, do this, it pushes it upwards. I do not want that. There's another bug there. Okay. So in debugging this bug, I found another bug. But I do want the, the player to, to, to push stuff in other situations. I basically don't want the player to push perpendicularly. But only like in reverse motion. Yes. Oh, the player's not really moving. Could, could I just remove the motion from the player? Would be okay. Probably actually, because the, the motion is still on the, the trunk. And then I always put a rotate trunk onto the player to represent that something's happening. Maybe I can get rid of that. Let's fix this book first, though. Um, let's see, maybe it's related. Oops. Oops. <laughs> Don't accidentally lose the game. Uh, in fact, let's uh, let's make a copy. <laughs> that's made me worried. Um, doing it in the editor is always a little scary. I mean, it saves it in local storage, so it shouldn't really matter. But uh, let me do.
that. Okay. Uh, Do, 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 do. Stuff. Probably use gets or something, but oh well. So, and I'm on Windows. Screw setting that up. Uh, okay. Thinking game channel. Save as uh, a copy. Um, all right, so this is a problem. What's that caused by? It's caused by one, three, two happening, and one, three, have eight happening twice. That makes sense because both the player and the the trunk are pushing the block, which is a problem, but shouldn't cause this. It's a separate book. Um, so after 138 is applied twice, 140 and 147 apply. Are they both the rigid body movement? One of them is rigid body movement. That makes sense. It propagates. I guess I could stop it from propagating because they, they're already both moving. Eh, let's leave it. It's fine. Uh, yeah. 147. Facts. Why does that not just loop forever? Surely that's moving that, then those two moving together. It's still going to be true over and over and over again. Maybe I should put a thing in here, stationary. Yeah, it should be fine. Let's see why not. Station crates, station crates. That should be a couple of less rules, or one less rule. One four seven applies. Okay, so yeah, we skip over that. Cool. Now one four seven happens. Um, right, perpendicular player, perpendicular trunk. That's correct. Perpendicular player, trunk rotate right. Perpendicular trunk. Yep, that is what happens. Yep, so we end up with a trunk rotate right on the player. That's fine by me. So that was 147, 151. There with the drum rotate, red top, ro uh, rotate right on it, moving into a dynamic, yes. Oh, this is where I use the movement. So yeah, I do still need them. Anyway, okay. Um, there's a player drum rotate right with a left dynamic. Yeah, that's okay. Here's the problem. Only if that's not currently moving. Because if it's moving already, then it's part of my... It's, it's part of what's moving downwards already. That it's not going to be necessary to it true with the mechanics I want to add later. Uh, don't rotate right, dynamic. Don't want to push this left in this situation because it's already being pushed. I'm gonna to have to say I'm gonna to have to say yes for now. Okay, so basically that's if it's stationary. Only if it's stationary. That I think will have fixed that book. No, it has not fixed that book. Okay, one five eight applies. Rigid writes. Rotate. Okay, so this is the stuff that only applies afterwards. Do so we have a moving crate, rigid right, and uh, okay, we just need to do this again. Stationary. We're just missing stationaries everywhere. Stationary crate. Station crate. Crate. Station crate. I don't think that's going to fix the bug though. Nope. So it's actually one six six one six seven. Of it. Oh, that are the problem. A particular player trunk rotates trunk gets rid of the trunk. 
Yep, the truck is gone. We then, in the direction that the player is facing, we, and the trunk rotates on, is the truck. Why does the truck then move? That's weird. Why do you end up moving? Because after that rule, the truck should be adjacent to the player. But I'm not moving the truck. Why are you moving? Weird. Hmm. Okay. Problem is that, yeah, okay, that thing hasn't moved yet. So maybe I should just do it in the late rule. If I made this a late rule, it would probably fix it. Oh, right, yeah. That's true. Okay, uh, I can't make it a late rule. I mean, I could. I could change it so a late rule would work. Or I could try and make it work as it is. One way to do that would be to put them both on the same layer. Or to just move the crate to a different layer. Maybe I'll do that. Crates can go on a different layer. Since I've done all the movement myself anyway. True, I haven't done all the movement myself anymore. This is going to be problematic. That does fix that. Now that happens. We could quite easily just add a rule to the end of this, which would be if there's a moving. It's okay, basically, I can just. That is, if there's a crate moving into a station crate, push the other crates. All I want, if there's a crate moving into a... Ah, this is so annoying. Okay. <laughs> well, that's not good. That's fine. That's not. <laughs> I think they've lost their rigidness. I think that's exactly what's going on there. Because like at the beginning, the rigidness is fine. Yeah, okay. I can just push them, yeah. But somehow I've like disconnected the rigidness. Now they're separate from each other. Even if I put them back, that's also not doing what it's supposed to do. Uh, but if I can squeeze in here, okay. If I put them back together, yeah, they're still not connected. Unless I put them back maybe where they were. Oh yeah. Oh, I don't know. That could be. Yeah, that could be something else. Okay. Hmm. Turns out doing Stephen Sausage Roll style movement is difficult in Puzzle Script. Yep. 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 Okay. Let's fix one bug at a time. That one's fixed. Hold off. Just lose the rigidness immediately. Let's draw the rigidnesses back. Rigid left. Oh, it's kind of annoying to do, but yeah, whatever. That's. Or the wrong. Oh, is that not allowed? Comment before the color. It's not okay. Well, no. Okay, rigidness come back. Tell me what's happening. You are not moving with the blocks. Got it. Uh, why not? Question. I mean, because I don't rerun the rule that. So in this rigidness thing, I always move.
Um, I always move the uh, originalness with the thing. How does the one, how does the originalness that's on the, on the initial crate end up? Rigidness on the other crate. How does that end up? Oh gosh, everything's very broken right now. Okay. Uh, 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 uh. Nothing's moving. Basically, why don't I just like at the end of the whole thing just say any crate with a rigid thing on it move the rigid thing. That would be simple, right? I have I have a rigid marker, yeah. Instead of actually propagating the moving onto all of the rigid stuff, I just yeah. Let's just do it like this. That's none of the none of the rigid scissors move. Same down here. Don't move. Yeah, move. Oh, I don't see why this would have been a problem. Weird bit. Let's go away. But yeah, I'm just gonna do it all in like a catch-all at the end. So after like everything, why not? Uh, if there is a, a moving crate with a rigid on it, then we have a moving crate and a moving rigid. Uh, I might as well just do. Uh, that'll do. Yeah, that's fine. What have I done to the level? Okay. Okay. Well, that moves it with it. Cool. So now at least it doesn't fall apart. Yeah. Cool. Uh, so where are the other bugs? What are the other bugs? There are definitely more bugs. What are they? Well, they now go through the wall. That's the thing. <laughs> that is a bug. That pushes that that way. Okay, that's a bug. That's correct, though. Yeah, that's just the wrong movement. And I already noticed that bug, so... Right. I don't know what's causing it. Is that everything? Except the wall problem? Uh, that's the same bug. <laughs> Ah, that's the same bug. I can't move stuff the way I want to move stuff. Okay, there's a bug. I can walk into a uh, crate. That's the same. It's the same problem as the wall problem because now player and crate are on different layers. Yeah, same as wall. Yep. Why did I move the crate to a different layer? Did I move it back. I can't remember what the reason was. Oh, okay. Well, if I don't have it, we have serious problems. That works. That doesn't work. What was the... Oh, the reason was because I moved the trunk into the same space as the... Oh, I literally just closed the tab. Great. Amazing. Fortunately, it saves. Post script cannot be reached. Why? Uh, yeah. Uh, what was I doing? Uh, moving crate back onto the other layer, which I did. Cool. Okay. I might as well keep the debug things in there. So I'm going to have to do the hitting into a wall manually. Right. Uh, so in both the rigid blocks, I'm going to have to say if if we have a moving crate moving into a st stationary static which is like a tautology but whatever 
And we have station recreates. Uh, the station static. And even though the wall's on a different layer, we still can't go through it. We've got caught looping lots. What if I do this? I mean, that's probably a problem. I should probably sort it out. Why do we loop so much? I'm removing the movement from the crates. No longer moving, so that rule shouldn't apply anymore. Uh, line one three nine. Right, so it's that rule group. I'm looping a lot, apparently. Well, okay, so I can see what the rules are that I keep applying. 139, 141, 145, 139, 141, 145. 139, 141, 145. Hmm, okay. Because the player is still... Players still try to move. It's like, okay, I'm going to move the crate again. It's like, well, no, you can't. We've already decided you can't do that. Because this is a way of stopping the crates that doesn't cancel the, the rigid movement the same way. Yeah, okay. So because this is a different kind of stoppage, we have to do something different. Uh, this is a little bit of a nightmare. Okay. Because we... Stopping like that. I mean, maybe there's a better way of dealing with the trunk situation. Keep these on the same layer. Maybe that makes sense. Yeah, let's try and find a better way to deal with the trunk. Basically putting the trunk on a different layer, I think is the goal. Or keeping the trunk on the same layer and then using a marker to represent where the trunk is going to go. Okay, create come back to the same layer. Where am I like? Create you come That's totally wrong. Yep, I know why it's wrong. Because the trunk gets put in the place, same place as the crate. Um, what I could do is do a late rule. That would be the easiest thing. It requires some more things. Unless I use the trunk rotates again. What I do here, I... Layer has a trunk rotate and the trunk, then we put the trunk rotate on we just remove the trunk. So I need to know which direction it needs to go in though. Don't I? Yeah, especially if I'm gonna do it, maybe I should just do it as a late rule and then it would be easy. Yeah, okay. Uh, let's just do some more of these trunk. Uh, trunk placement up. Sure. Placement right, trunk placement down, trunk placement left. Whatever works, it's a game jam. With the worst possible code. Uh, so, what I'm going to do is, in this situation, I'm going to put a Oh, but which way is the? Depends on. Oh, uh, depends on both the direction I'm facing and the direction I'm rotating towards. Uh, it depends only on the direction I'm rotating towards. Oh yeah, so it's fine. It's just this. Um, don't do this yet. Okay, yeah, that's fine. The player with the trunk rotate on it becomes, well, so it's not just that, it's... 
it's going to be uh, like a separate rule for each up uh drill placement up okay i haven't even got to the main mechanic that i want to <laughs> i guess i'm only a couple of hours in that's fine it's 46 hours to go rotate then right Down, left, left. The stuff that I want to do later is really going to make this stuff even more complicated, but okay, whatever. Uh, not assigned to a layer, that's fine. It can go on the same layer as. Can't on, specifically, can't go on the same layer. Uh, let's make trunk placement equals trunk placement up or trunk placement right or trunk placement down, trunk placement left. Cool. Um, so we put those down, we then, oh, we haven't put it in a layer, specifically not where the player is, but it could be, if I can just, re yeah, okay, put the the same as that, boom. Why don't I just rotate the, it around? Could do. I don't need new things. Okay. Oh, yeah. I think this will work. I think this will work. I just basically rotate the trunk rotate around to be a up, right, down, left, and then use that to decide where to place the thing. Use the same objects as late. So we have a late up. Late up. Player trunk rotate up. Nothing. Player trunk rotate up. Oh, we don't need that anymore. Trunk. Right. Uh, down. <laughs> okay, I see the problem there. I don't want to move those unless... Okay, well, hold on. Well, why are they still moving? They are moving crates, Bridget, because, yeah, because the thing wasn't cancelled. Okay. Uh, do, 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 do. Don't want the ridges to move. Oh, I mean, I also don't want to rotate in that situation. And yeah, this is bad. Oh, okay. That all works. That's nice. That does not. That's okay, though. We can fix that afterwards. Yeah, but I can like, move this thing around. It's getting there. Okay.
So, uh, how to deal with this? This is a problem. Why does that happen? It doesn't happen in that situation. So that situation is okay, but that situation is not. Why? Isn't that weird? Okay, let's just debug. Okay. Back to let's just put the sit level in that situation to begin with. There we go. Yep. Okay, let's find out what's going on. Rule 132 is happening, which is just by pumping motion to the trunk. Cool. And 138 is happening twice. It should only be happening once, but it's okay. We'll do it twice for now. Uh, it's a separate bug. That is the bug that causes. Did I just put a character in somewhere? Yes. Uh, that's the bug that causes this to do the wrong thing. Yep. Okay. Um, so. 138 happens twice. 147 happens once. Right, perpendicular player, perpendicular trunk. Player, trunk, rotate right, perpendicular trunk. That's fine. Uh... <laughs> Then, uh, so that was 147. That's fine. So 166 happens. Perpendicular player trunk rotates, yes, for the trunk. We get rid of the trunk. Because we're still able to rotate. That's not true. We should not still be able to rotate. Should not be getting rid of the trunk in that situation. Okay, uh, so where's the thing that's supposed to stop me? Uh, right, because that thing can't move. So what should we be having there is the player trunk rotate stationary dynamic. Get rid of the rotate. Kept the movement, is that a bad thing? Probably. We also need to do the same if the trunk can't move. Ah, I'm getting lost in this, okay. No, this should have happened. Trunk, stationary crate, stationary trunk, stationary crate. The trunk is immediately blocked from reverse motion. Yes, exactly. Why is that not happening? One, four, five. Okay. Why is that not happening? Interesting. So at that point, only 132 and 138 are. 132 is simply the one that makes both of those perpendicular. 138 is the one that says, okay, push the thing below. But then that should be cancelled because things can't move, right? Oh, because I haven't put rigid in. Uh, no, I don't know. Rigid. Rigid. Crate station crates. That pushes adjacent crates. Dynamic crates. Dynamic crates. Can you even put Richard there? What, and what's the behavior of there? Oh, it fixes it. <laughs> yeah, that, oh, whoa. Okay. In the article, in the docs about uh, rigid body stuff, that thing. No, but I'm going to do it anyway. Apparently putting rigid there fixes things, so I'm just going to say, yeah, sure, that's good, we'll go with that. That's not correct, this is fine. That's fine. That's fine, how's this stuff still? That's all good, okay. It's not, that's okay. 
That's fine. That's fine. Okay, but things are getting there. Things are definitely getting there. Uh, so, next book is that one. Whoa, that's a nasty book. That's in the secondary movement. The secondary movement's going wrong. Only one of the things is sliding. Yeah. And then we just have like a block that's by itself. As far as it knows, it was always a single block with connectivity to the site. <laughs> so. Uh, yeah, okay. Let's just find out what's going on with that. Uh, let's just put us in that position. So you just move along one. There we go. Uh, nothing happened. What? Oh, what? Okay. So when I start, I can't do that. But then I can. Something. Okay. Something's becoming. Things left behind. The state is not being cleaned up properly. What is being left behind? It's probably something that's meant to be transparent. Let's make stuff red and see what happens. Bet one of these is being left behind. So that doesn't work. Should work, but <laughs> separate thing. Wait, what? Okay, it's not that at all. Unless that, where is that in the layers? I mean, pretty high up actually. Yeah, um, yeah, that should show. It's not those. What is going wrong? Okay, whatever, let's see. So. Rigid motion failing. Wait, after it. What? If I run the game, start, down, nothing happens. If I move, reset, press down, something happens. <laughs> oh no. <laughs> Hello. Hello, Kira. How is how are you doing? Things are broken right now. I try to make things work. That's not supposed to happen. And weirdly, it happens. It doesn't happen when I start the level. But if I do stuff and then reset and then try it, that happens. <laughs> it's not good. Oh, <laughs> that's not supposed to happen either. Um, okay. Oh no, we're gonna have a problem here as well. I've like already started stuff moving. If I can't complete the rotation, should it continue? I guess it should. Yeah, that's fine. That's fine. Okay, no problem. Not a problem. All right. Uh, so, why is this happening, and why is it only happening? There's definitely that I'm hitting a puzzle script bug here somehow. <laughs> you made that level. You made the level for the um, for the collaborative game. So you've at least tried it. Uh, okay. So, so this. After a reset, that works. Okay, let's just find out why that's happening. So after a reset, this happens, and it becomes a bit of a mess. So let's follow along. One, three, two happens. Have the player. Okay, that's fine. One, three, eight happens. Rigid. Dynamic create uh, crate. Dynamic crate. What's that? That's the player hitting the crate. Okay, well that is a problem still. So maybe if I fix that bug, it'll fix this other bug. 
But no, that should be fine. So players pushing the crate below. Um, players pushing the crate below. That should end up being cancelled out. So that's 138. 142. Rigid left. Moving crates, rigid left. Yeah, okay, so that tries to propagate it. It's fine. But then stuff can't move in the end. 142 happens, all this stuff happens. Rigid movement application failed, rolling back. 172. Yeah. Okay, that's fine. And then it goes again, and it's like, all right, well, why does it go again? This time it does one, th one, three, two, one, four, seven. It jumps down to here. Right, it skips over the rigid movement. Yes, is that how rigid works? I'm not totally sure. Uh, one, four, seven. Right, perpendicular player, perpendicular trunk. Perpendicular player, trunk rotate right. Yes, this is exactly the situation I want to end up in. One five one. Player trunk rotate right. Stationary dynamic. Yep, there is a stationary dynamic there, indeed. And the player has the trunk rotate, and then we say left on that dynamic. Okay, so that's cool. So that is moving that crate that way. Exactly what I want. Uh, so that was rule one five one. 156 happens. We do rigid crate movement. Stuff should get propagated. 156 down applied. Rigid trunk rotate. Dynamic crate. Layer is still moving at this point. This might mess things up. Trunk rotate dynamic crate. Now the crate's going to be moving down as well. That is true. Yes. 156, 160. Bridget left. Yes, yeah, so we have a left connection. There's some space there. Moving crate, rigid left, stationary crates, right, yep. Moving crate, rigid left, moving crate, rigid right. So they both should end up moving. I was surprised. They don't seem that both end up moving down. 6166. Perpendicular player, trunk rotates, trunk. This is just the, the trunk being rotated around. Oops. So what seems to end up happening here is the crate on the right moves, but the one next to it does not. That's what that looks like to me. How about I simplify the problem and just do... I just realized I don't have a way to do a completely unconnected box. Let's get another character here. Uh... Box Unicode white square. I want that? Give it to. You. There we go. Uh, where is it? Copy it from there. Let's make it a white box. And then that's just a crate. No rigid connections. Okay. What happens in this case? Uh, nothing on the first turn, but then it, that, that works, okay. That goes the wrong way. Oh, that behaves differently to that. Why? Because of the player movement. Oh, because the wall's there. Yeah, okay. The player movement's still a problem. I should probably just fix that. Okay, so that moves like that. So that is moving that direction. But if I put the thing back in, uh, it was 
paths. Uh, then uh, then I will try again to do that. Okay, so why does that happen? That's super weird. We should create movements. This only happens in the trunk rotate case. Yeah, that's right. So only if I'm still rotating do I want this to happen. So, actually, why did the rules get canceled again on this turn? Yeah, that's something I need to figure out. So 133 applies. That's the top one. Yes, that's fine. 148, that always has to happen. 148, we have taken the player perfectly in the trunk, and we put a thing on the player saying which direction the trunk is in. Yes. All that happens there. 152. So we know which direction the trunk is in, but uh, we get the block that's next to the player and we say move that block left. Yep. Correct. None of this is rigid, so this should continue. Fine. 157. Now we have rigid stuff. If trunk rotate is existing, it must be because um, rules being applied. We have a dynamic and a crate, which we actually have in two situations. We have the player pushing on the crate still, and we have the uh, Crate pushing to the other crates. Yep. What's that look like in the other one? Yeah, it's the same. Dynamic crates. Right. This gets cancelled because. Okay. This gets cancelled because of the player thing. Okay. Got it. Um, all right. So the problem is, I just need to fix the player movement. Um, which is that in this situation, that should not move that way, it should move that way, okay. So the player isn't actually moving, that's the problem there. Um, so at this point, if the player is moving, I do want that to be recognized, but the player isn't moving, I'm just using the direction to represent something for later. Do I need to do that? Can I remove it? I, yeah, I can't remove it because of something else that requires to still be there, like this bit down here. That's true. The trunk rotates there at that point. The trunk rotate on at this point. I might not need it. Let's see what happens if I get rid of the direction of the player. The player wants to move that way. We say, no, it's not the player moving that way. It's just the trunk moving that way. Okay. Um, and then, at this point, I need to change everything that assumes that the player might have motion on them. So there's no player involved anywhere, there's a player here. At this point, the player doesn't have perpendicular motion, but that's okay, I can get rid of it, right? It's, it's gone. Might have to end up undoing all this in a second. Does it work? Yeah. So I'm just saying there's no motion on the player. The player isn't going to push anything. The player is just that. It's the trunk that's moving. Fine by me. Um, at this point, we have a player with a trunk rotate up in it, but we have this. This is the problem. But I could put the movement on the trunk rotate up. That would do it. That would indeed do it. At this point, when we create the trunk rotate things, we actually move the perpendicular motion onto that. 
I like the sound of that. That sounds good. Uh, you onto there. To there. There. Cool. And then instead of this, we do this. And these get removed later anyway. So it doesn't matter if they're pretending to move. Yep. That. Oh, and I need to keep that movement going. So player's not moving. It's not moving. Not moving. But the other thing is. The trunk rotate thing is moving. It's not actually gonna move, but it's it's just remembering the direction. The relevant direction. So that it can do that. Oh in fact, maybe I could lose it at that point. So then we move all the stuff. If that gets cancelled, and then the thing that we're trying to push is still stationary, then we remove the trunk rotate. So we still need the locate. We still need the direction at this point. It's this, and we lose it, and we get rid of the. Uh, we need the direction of the player anymore. For that rule, yes, apparently. No trunk rotate, trunk. Okay, that's just removing the... Let's do this. It's fine. Stationary. Everything's going to be stationary. Fine, stationary trunk. Oh, I bet I've broken everything. <laughs> I bet I've broken everything. Perpendicular player. Trunk rotate, trunk. That's not going to be a thing anymore. The player's not moving. The trunk rotate still exists and it's still moving. It is. It is indeed. Okay. The player is not. When do we actually remove the trunk rotate? Not until later. Not until here. Okay. Player and moving trunk rotate comes player. Oh, we're just removing the trunk at this point. That's fine. Okay. Cool. We we just move this. Let's move it onto the trunk rotate. Oh, I bet I've broken everything. Let's see. What's this bit doing? Nothing. Oh, that was stopping the motion. Is that all I was doing? Oh no, this is the bit that's like, yeah, okay, like rotating. The trunk rotates around. Yeah, okay, and this is the point where I can remove the movement from it. That's fine. At this point, we just place the trunk down. Oh, no way this is going to work. <laughs> Immediately went wrong. <laughs> everything's, oh no, everything's going very wrong. That stuff still works, that's good. At least that works. The trunk definitely isn't working properly. And I can't like walk forwards or anything. Everything's everything's bad right now. Okay. <laughs> uh, I need to think about how much time I want to spend on certain stuff. So 48 hours. It'd be nice if half of that time could be on levels. I mean, that's quite a lot of time. Be nice if at least eighteen hours could be on like on levels. That means I've got ages. I've got I'm, I'm less than three hours in. Yeah, forty eight hours is a long time. It's gonna be fine. Okay. Um, Okay, what's going, what's going wrong? Why can't I just walk forwards? Why is that broken? 131 applies, yes, exactly. A player and trunk should push each other. 165, right applied. Uh, player, no trunk rotate. Trunk, player, stationary trunk. Oh. Yeah, that's a problem. Player, no trunk rotate. There certainly isn't with a trunk next to it, and then I'm stopping the trunk. 
Oh no, okay. Um, so the reason that line is there, so when these run, the player trunk rotates, the stationary dynamic, we stop the player from moving, and then we transfer that stopping to the trunk. I could do an action hack here. Do I want to do an a action hack? Or what I could do is leave the trunk rotate on the player and make it stationary. Stationary trunk rotate. Stationary dynamic, that's fine. And if we have a player with a stationary trunk rotate, we remove the trunk rotate and we make this. Yep, that's, that's it. Can I walk forwards? I can walk forwards. Can I walk backwards? I can walk backwards. Can I rotate? I. My trunk gets very long, which is actually something I want to happen later, but not yet. <laughs> uh, so that's that's not that's not a good thing. Uh, what a mess. Okay. Um, what happens if I do this? Okay, it pushes the block correctly. It's just leaving a trunk behind. There's some there's some simple bug there. Okay, that's that's not too worrying. And that stuff pushes correctly. It's just my trunk is it's becoming a mess. The yellow stuff is the trunk, to be clear. Elephant's trunk. <laughs> it's not very clearly the elephant's trunk yet. So, um, okay, so what's causing that problem? Let's just walk forwards. In fact, I don't even need to walk forwards, just press up and it happens. Okay, 133 three happens, which is that rule, yep. It's fine, 148. Right. Perpendicular trunk, okay. Player, oh, it's probably that I just don't remove the motion from the trunk and I just let it move. That's almost certainly what's going on. Right, player, perpendicular trunk, player, perpendicular tr trunk, rotate right. This is me adding the, the trunk rotate thing that tells me which direction the trunk was in. And the trunk's still gonna move at this point. That's okay, maybe. One, six, eight happens. Up, player with a trunk rotate on it. There's a trunk rotate up, and then the late roll happens. Yeah, so what, there's no point where I'm removing the motion from the from the trunk. But shouldn't I be removing the trunk somewhere? Should we be removing the trunk here? That's no longer in that direction. I just, I just, if if we're moving, if the trunk rotate is moving still, or if the, even if there is a trunk rotate, I just want to get rid of the trunk, right? The rotating. Uh oh, that's a problem. But I'll fix that afterwards. Okay, stuff is maybe working. Uh, for those who have joined recently, yes, I'm implementing Stephen's sausage roll type movement. That's not the only thing that I'm going to be doing, but there's um, it's just the start. It's just the basic movement. Okay, this is pretty good. This is working quite well. <laughs> I can erase the wall. Um, that's not intended. If I push these things together and then, oh, whoops. If I push, oh, can I move now? I can. So there's no weird start of level bug. What does that? If I push them into there, that does that. Uh, let me bring this around. And then try and sweep into these. That works perfectly. Okay, almost there. Almost there. What's the bug? The bug is that I can like destroy the wall. That's because it's not a a crate. It's not a dynamic thing. It's a static thing, and I'm only checking for static thing uh, for dynamic thing. That is the problem. Hmm. That's easy enough to fix, I think. Is this the best implementation of this that I can do, or is this like horrible? 
Well, actually, one of, the, one of the things I want to try is, can I just like replace this? These are these two rules are very similar. Rigid dynamic create, push to the create, right? Because crates are like, I think I can just get rid of that rule. In fact, I might be able to make that dy dynamic on both sides. This all seems to be fine. Yep. More the wall raising. Well, if I get myself in a stuck situation, how would I do that? Uh... <laughs> yeah, it's a little bit like Bonfire Peaks as well. It's um, it's more like uh, Stephen Sausage Roll. I don't know if you've played Stephen Sausage Roll, but um, yeah, the movement is like you're always holding something in front of you, you rotate. Yeah, Bonfire Peaks does the same thing. But in Bonfire Peaks, you're not always holding something. You can like pick stuff up and drop stuff. But in this, you're always holding the thing because the thing that you're holding, what's going to happen is that the blue thing is like the body of the elephant and the yellow thing is the trunk of the elephant. And so it's always moving around in front of the elephant and it like swipes things out of the way and stuff. Um, and then there'll be more stuff after that. So yes, the, the, the movement is a bit like Bonfire Peaks. Oh, okay. What do I need to fix? The wall are raising. I guess. Oh, I could probably remove that same rule from down here. So dynamic crates, dynamic crates. Don't I have the same thing going on? Can I just get rid of that? Probably. Probably. I should check if I do a side swipe like that. Does that work properly when there's two rigid bodies hitting each other? Yeah, that seems to work. Uh, ignore the fact that I can go through the wall. Get you out of the way. Was that everything? Was everything normal there? Yeah. I'm gonna raise the wall, but that's okay for now. Let me bring you all the way over. Oh, then we have a problem. Okay, I was expecting something like that might happen. Yeah, okay. There's some kind of problem where this should cancel, but it's not canceling. Two bugs to fix. Wall erasure. And this. That should not allow me to rotate. I guess ideally in that situation, all the rigid movements would just cancel. Is that something I've just introduced by removing that rule? Uh, get you out of the way. In fact, that doesn't happen. Oh god, I think I might have just introduced that. Let's have a look. No, no, okay, that's, that's, that's always been there. But now this is like a, a smaller block. <laughs> no longer an L shape. That's not intentional. Okay. Uh, two bugs then. Get rid of this rule again. I think it's pretty unnecessary. It's duplicated. And then. What do I want to do? Which bug to fix first? Let's, let's fix, uh, let's fix this one. Let's put you. Move all this stuff. I could probably do a simple form of it like this. And then just stick a box there. What, where's the box character? Let me throw that in there as well so I've got easy access to it. Okay. So that's one box and then a separate box disconnected from it and then Oh, that, okay, that's that's correct. Interesting. Oh, then it's not correct. What changed? Ah, oh, I'm definitely hitting a puzzle script book here because when I reset, it's different behavior to when I start the level. <laughs> no, okay. I don't like the idea of having to deal with a puzzle script book. Okay. Wait, so that, even that simple causes it. Okay, so 
just the rigid body against the wall. If I move, it happens. If I start the level from scratch, it doesn't happen. What should I do in your level? The level isn't done yet. <laughs> I'm, I'm just figuring out how to do the movement mechanics. I'm implementing how things move. Um, none of the what's the goal of the puzzle or any of that stuff is, is, is there yet. It's purely just getting this movement to work. That's just the order. That's, the, that's how you have to do things. You first have to implement the mechanics in their like completely abstract form without any levels. Um, and then you start designing levels for it. And then if you, if you design a few levels and you're like, oh, a new mechanic would be quite interesting here, then you implement that. You always implement it without a level first. Um, you can have levels in mind. I do have levels in mind, but I haven't done them yet. Um, I can sort of tell you what's going to happen. Um, the, what's, the way the game is going to work is that you're an elephant that rotates like this. This is the blue and yellow elephant for now. Eventually it will look more like an elephant. Um, and you will be able to stretch your trunk in a forward direction until it grabs onto something. It can stretch infinitely. It can grab onto something and then you can pull it back towards you. And that's going to be the, the main mechanic that's going on here, is that you can sort of grab things from afar. And the way the levels are going to work is that there's going to, it's going to be a classic, like um, a bit like um, a monster snowball. <laughs> I guess also a bit like a monster's expedition as well, um, where there's water and you're trying to get across the... Trying to try and get across the water. There will be 3D stuff for sure, yes. Uh, Although I don't know, right now this is kind of top down. Like these will be like tree logs or something. Although I don't know what that would be. Whatever. Um, yeah. Okay. So why does this happen? That's not good. And why does it not happen when I start the game from scratch? And then it happens. How very weird. Anyway, let's just let's just debug. Okie dokie. Uh, one through three happens. Yep, that always happens. That's fine. That just means a rotation is happening. One four seven happens. This is in the first. The initial rigid crate didn't happen. That's good because there's nothing in the way of the trunk. Then uh, one four seven is this one. Right player, perfect trunk. Player, perfect. we put a trunk rotate right on top of the player. Cool. One five one. Um, we check if there's anything in that direction. Uh, is that the right direction? One four seven. Yeah, yeah, because we put perpendicular on the trunk rotate right, so that's fine. Yeah. So one five one. Is there anything in that di in the direction of the trunk rotate right that is a Stationary dynamic. There is, then we start moving it. And it's only stationary because it might be part of the object we've already started moving. So yeah, so if there's a stationary thing, start moving it. Okay, that's good. Uh, that's, that's fine, 156. So at some point, rigid application fails, which is, Expected eventually, but it should should just yeah cancel everything. What am I done? One five six. So trunk trunk is rotating. We have a dynamic pushing to a crate. So yep. So the two crates push each other. That's effectively what's happening there. Five six six five. That should fail. Ultimately, I mean, yeah, I guess, I guess it ends, at, it fails at the end of the rule. That's what should be happening. Okay, so I always forget how rigid works. Rigid just applies. Then, if the at the end of the rule, something that was meant to move from a rigid rule doesn't move, it just cancels the whole move and runs it again. Okay, I think I'm gonna lose my voice. <laughs> All this talking.
Uh, so 165 is next. Player trunk rotate, trunk, player trunk rotate. Well, the thing is, the rigid does get cancelled. So they, I'm expecting that. So the crates can't move to the wall, so it gets cancelled. So then we go back to the building. 133, 147. Yep. 75, 151. Uh, yep. That is, yeah, we apply a left motion to that crate. 151. Should skip over all of this rigid great movement. So we go straight to 165. We do. So that should be the difference there. 151 to 165, 151, 156. Yeah. So we're skipping over that rigid great movement. 165. We're doing player, trunk, rotate. So the, those, two, those two things aren't pushing each other. So then we've got player, trunk, rotate. Trunk, we remove the trunk. Well, this is a problem because we aren't supposed to be moving anymore. Yeah, we're just removing the trunk as though we're about to move. And then we actually do move. So there's the problem, right? 165, 166, 171. Oh, okay. That is all the issue. So the issue is that I'm continuing to rotate even though um, I shouldn't be. So 165 was there. So what I was expecting to happen is this to stop me. Oh, but there I don't have any, I don't check for any movement on the trunk rotate. Is that the whole thing? Nope, that's not the whole thing. Oh, I added that to stop that smearing thing from happening. Ooh, okay, hold on. What's going on here? I think I'm going to go get some more water. Be right back. All right, time to fix this stuff. Um, so I was just thinking while I was getting my water, what my timing should be. I would like all the mechanics to be implemented within at worst eight hours. That's a long time. I'm sure this rigid, this, this movement stuff would probably be the hardest part. There is the secondary mechanic that I need to add as well. It's not secondary, it's like the main mechanic. All the stuff I'm doing so far is not the actual mechanic. Um, but I guess, yeah, we'll see. 
Last night I was. Shouldn't take that long. Shouldn't. Okay. Um. Do do do. Right, so, so the bug is around this line. Um, I've tried adding the movement back in, but that's a problem. Yeah, I don't wanna, wait, no, I do wanna just get rid of the, okay, I wanna get rid of the trunk rotate if, if we're not rotating anymore. That's all I need to do. So player trunk rotate, the stationary dynamic, this is the thing that's supposed to get rid of the, okay, get rid of the trunk rotate. I think we're done then. Uh, not from there, from that side. Yes. No, this is gonna have its own problems, but I think that's probably a better direction to go in. I mean, it has exactly the same problem. Um, in that we're still rotating anyway. Why though? Because that shouldn't be moving. It isn't moving. I'm surprised that the rigid connector is moving. Red dot. Strange. Uh... So this should be happening. Is that happening? Let's see. Uh, one, six, two, I want to be applying on this run. No, it's not applying. So what's happening before one, six, two, one, five, one, which is way up here, which is where we just apply the left motion to that. Oh, but that's, that's getting canceled. That should be getting canceled. Whoa. Why is that not getting canceled? Hold on, let me move and then do that. One six five is hap. Wait, which one's one six? One six five. Oh no, that's fine. Six six is fine. One five one is fine. So no, okay, that's fine. Okay, no, that is fine. Okay, <laughs> yeah, we're adding the left movement. Oh, but we're not removing it again. That is the problem. This is uh, this needs to be part of this rigidness. These, okay, that is all it is. Uh, uh, needs to be part of this rigidness. And we need to just add rigid to every line. Rigid, rigid, rigid. That might, I mean, I might not have thought about that fully. Ah. <laughs> oh, that's not good. I mean, that's, that's good. That's, that's all right. That's not, uh, that just keeps moving. Okay. That's just a problem of like, we're not removing the movement from the trunk. Um, that's pretty good. I think so. I think that was a good move to make. Yeah, because that's start, that's kicking off the motion of the thing. Always just remove it manually. That'll be another option. Okay, let's just think about that. Let's keep that in there for now. And then, uh, so why is that? Why does that continue? Because I'm not removing the motion from it. So if the player. As a moving trunk rotate in that direction with a stationary, so that should be happening at that point. One six two, one six two is applying. Cool. And we remove the trunk rotate. Ah, this was designed for. So it's it's this. It's this. There no trunk rotate. I don't want to do it every time. Hmm. 
Maybe I shouldn't remove the trunk rotate. There, trunk rotate. Yep. The player with the moving trunk rotate, station drive dy dynamics, we we're currently removing the trunk rotate, but then this can't apply to stop the trunk from moving. I could say no trunk rotate, but then it would happen in situations where I don't want it to happen. I only want it to happen in when this happens. So I sort of need to leave something behind. Could leave an action behind. Ooh, let's do it. Let's do it. It's hacky, but whatever. It works. Oh, it's going to conflict with something else. No, let's not do that. I don't like using actions because I'm going to have actions involved. Uh, let's just leave a marker. What else could I do? I could make it a stationary trunk rotate. Oh yeah, in fact, that's what it was. So why was that an issue? I feel like I, I, feel like I did this before. In fact, I must have done. That's why that rule was written like that. I mean, it works. Okay. Steven sausage roll movements. Uh, that's not supposed to happen. <laughs> uh, basically, every time I play with this, I found a different problem. Oh, and then that, now that doesn't work. Wait, what? Oh, it's only in that situation when it's being pushed on the on the end of the swooping motion. Yeah. Okay. Fixable. <laughs> that's pretty funny. <laughs> Uh, let's just set that up then as an example. The U go here. And you here. And then you go here. And you to swap over. I've never actually tried putting the player in the trunk in the wrong way around. I think we're fine. And the bugs didn't happen. Oh, it was when doing... No, it was. No, it was when doing this. Uh, this. Okay. Q, P. No, P, Q. Uh, okay. There's the book. Now we have to fix that one. The game of whack-a-mole with bugs. I wonder what everybody else is up to. What kind of games are they making? Okay, so that's going like that. Is my timer still running? I hope it is. Yeah, my timer is still running. So that's doing that. Why are you doing that? Um, I, that should be cancelling. It's not ever cancelling, so there's the problem. So it should be cancelling on this, in this rigid crate movement. Yes, secondary rigid crate movement. Something along here should be failing to move, which it is, and then this is not cancelling. Why? Yeah, like the stuff here is not moving, so why would... Oh no, that is moving. So the problem is it's not propagating to there, I believe, is what's happening. Well, a rigid crate movement is failing somewhere, actually. Ooh. Okay, so what lines are these? 152 to 160. 152 to 160. So these, the second rigid crate movement is failing on that first time through and not failing on the second time through. So I imagine the first time through it's doing what I'm, I'm, I'm expecting it to do, which is just cancel. And the second time through it's allowing it. Okay. 123, that's always supposed to happen. 148. That's supposed to happen. Oh gosh, I've got to think about stuff rotated now. Uh, player perpendicular trunk. Player perpendicular trunk rotate down. Yes, that's right. 
in particular the trunk, 154. So this is the second layer of rigid crate movement, yep. Yeah. 154. We have a player with a trunk rotate down on it next to a crate that is stationary and dynamic. Why are we not skipping over this? Because we've, we've literally just cancelled that. This shouldn't happen. We, am I missing a rigid somewhere? Am I missing a, I'm missing a plus? There we go. I got it. I got it. And now it works. Perfect. Perfect. Except for the fact that I can still raise the wall. <laughs> but that's that's another issue for another time. And when I say another time, I mean next. That's going to be the next thing to fix. Oh no, I finished the level. Oops. Um, this is feeling pretty robust now, except the wall erasure. Let's just like push everything into everything. And then also find out what happens if I, I put me inside a bunch of stuff. Let's leave a space open above me and then do, uh, 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 uh. In fact, let's do another one of those and then you, you go away, put some walls around me. So I'm surrounded in stuff, whatever this stuff is going to be, I haven't figured that out yet. I can walk up and down, I cannot rotate, I cannot get out here, cool. That's good, that is good. Let's stop the wall from erasing. What's next? And then I can move on to the actual main mechanic of the game. <laughs> da, 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 da. Nice stuff back. Cool. As back as we were. Actually, I want to first test what happens if I just push all these things into each other. Did I already do that? Maybe I already did that. I mean, that's perfect. Do some swipes. That's exactly what should happen. Swipe the other way. Swipe on that. Shouldn't be able to, perfect. Swipe that way, perfect. Lift that up, swipe that down that way. Oh my gosh, I'm surprised it works. <laughs> I was not finding more bugs. Okay, I can skip over the wall, that's, that's, that's a problem, but okay. I can erase the wall. Best way of doing book testing is just randomly do stuff until stuff breaks. Yeah, so that's right. I can't twist that way, but I can twist that way. Nice. The problem with rigid body movement is that the way it's implemented in the puzzle scripts is it's hard to like, I would quite like to like leave a little error message behind. It goes, like a little red marker when you bump into something and it can't move, it goes boop. But the way rigid motion works is that the, the rules that are figuring out the movement are like completely skipped and they just don't happen. Um, but maybe I could do something clever where I have a rule after that block. It goes, oh, well, this would have moved if those rules had run. So I'll leave a little error. I think that might work actually. I'll figure that out. Uh, okay. This is good. This is very good. This is not. This is not. This is not. In fact, I can just do this. <laughs> okay. Let's fix that. So reason for that is probably just because I'm checking for crates and not walls or something somewhere. Almost certainly. Or like dynamics and not walls. Mm -hmm. So what should happen when I'm rotating, say I'm rotating like this, is it should at least see this one and cancel my rotation at that point. In the same way as if there were a rigid body here hitting against a wall that can't move. So that's in the first set of rigid body movement, which is here. I'm hoping that what I want to happen is that it gets it all gets cancelled if 
this is happening. Right, but that's that's interesting because nothing's actually trying to move. When I do this, nothing at the end of the turn is still trying to move. Everything's because the way the rotation happens if I'm like literally deleting the object and placing it down somewhere else, nothing's moving, so rigid body movement's not gonna get cancelled. I can't use the rigidness to do this. I mean I could just do a simple check of is there a static wall? Maybe that's the simple thing I do. Uh, is there ever going to be a situation where there's one there and they still want something to happen? I don't think so. So I could just cancel the movement. I could just cancel the movement. Like dynamic static cancel. Is that too strict? I mean, well, it doesn't work for that situation. It works for that situation. Why not, right? Like, because at this point, the player and the, yeah, this is a simple cancel the turn. I just, the problem with cancel is I know there are bugs to do with winning and canceling at the same time. So I could, I, yeah, I could end up with bugs later on that are not my fault. Uh, or is it winning and restarting? I think it might, it might be both. Um, Is that okay? That's probably a. Uh, what, would be the, what would be the alternative? So dynamic moving into a static cancel. Alternative would be. Alternative would be. Somehow. Say stop doing any rotation. Yes. That's the alternative. Stop doing any rotation. In which case I can just remove. That's actually reasonable. I mean, so if, basically if I have trouble moving into static, just stop it from moving. <laughs> Maybe I should just do that. And I think that would have exactly the same effects. Yeah. Um, that's still a problem. I'll sort that out in a second. Okay, we're getting there. We're getting there. So, uh, I guess I can get rid of this stuff. This is old code before. And I'm definitely not going down this route anymore. So, screw that. It was quite easy to write. Yeah. Okay. Okie dokie. Next. This book. So it's similar, it's just it's on the second second rigid body movement. I have a situation where the the yeah. Basically there's a static thing there rather than a a, a dynamic thing that can't move. So I wanna say, well if there's a static thing there, let's cancel the rotation. The same way that I would cancel the rotation if there's a rigid body thing that can't move there. Which is just the case of this bit, stationary dynamic. Uh, so in the situation where it's stationary dynamic or where it's static, I want to do the same thing. I think that's literally all I need. So static. Static. Is that it? 
that's it. All books fixed, maybe? <laughs> Probably not. Was there another book I found? Was there another book I found that I've now just forgotten completely? Oh, I hope not. I feel like I had a book recently that... I stopped thinking about... No, I fixed it, right? It was the one where it was like... I did this and this. It, it would move the thing. I think we're good. I think we're good. I think that is movement done. That is Steven's versus roll movement done. Okay. Hey, look, I could do a shape without a hole in it. If I did. Oh. Yeah. <laughs> and these are all still entirely separate. Right, that doesn't work because of the wall down there. Yeah, so I can't move any of these now. If I like go back to when I push those in, there isn't a wall down there. So this should in theory move the L shape at the top, the horizontal, and the square. Oh. Yeah. Nice. It appears to work. Even sausage roll movement done. Ah, okay. Milestone. Now, next mechanic is... Extending <laughs> uh, one's trunk. This is the main mechanic of this game. So this movement was really just because I need there to be a, like, separate body and trunk, kind of in the same way in Stevenson's role, there's a body and fork. In this case, I want body and trunk, two separate things. And because of that, I end up with Stevenson's role style movement. Oh, why can't I move there? Does that make sense, actually? No, I should be able to pull that to the right. And, oh, no. I'm, I was thinking I was the wrong way around. Okay, it's like that. Yep. Yep. <laughs> okay. I was pressing right in this position, thinking I should move, but it's because it's the yellow bit's my trunk. There we go. Whew, I found a bug. Okie dokie. Okie dokie. How are we for time? We're currently... Exactly three hours and a half into the jam. Like, it just ticked over. Cool. Fun. Next thing. What a nightmare. Maybe I should comment some of this stuff. Um, yeah, so... Um, basic elephant movements. Um, if... Well, it's obviously what that's saying. I can just go in there. Uh, Rigid Crate Movement Phase 1. Um, About this all cape this all caps this um basic elephant movements because sometimes I like to put like subheadings in. Rigid crate movement phase one. Uh so uh this is movement um caused by any initial motion not uh, the not motion not the motion uh, at the end of the rotation I guess that's descriptive enough then this is what's this this is uh, okay um, uh, Rotation. This is the rotation logic. Um, move. Well, so that's that. If trunk 
can still move. Uh, place marker on the player object. Doesn't the L in this font look really weird? Object. Uh, rigid create movement phase two. Uh, this is, oh, in fact, I can put the thing on. So I put a, th a marker in each of these to say only run these if we have some rotation happening. So I can still do that. Oh, but that's going to happen anyway because it's in the rule. Yeah, okay. Yeah. Fair enough. Um, this is movement caused by the end of a rotation. It's effectively the same as above. It's just slightly complicated beginning. Then what we have is player rotates. What's this doing? This is canceling. Yeah. This is canceling. Uh, cancel rotation if um object that should object in space being rotated into is not able to move and then uh this is um Change mark. Oh, I guess this is just the like actual, uh, actually move the trunk. And create rigid. Uh, this is actually place place marker to indicate where trunk should rotate to. Um, Actually, place the trunk it's here. Um, move rigid connectors with the crates that they belong to. Cool. Uh, rotation phase one. Rotation phase two. Uh, clean up. Nice. That's neat and tidy that code is. Neat O. Neat O burrito. Um, so. I just want to keep playing with it. <laughs> it does appear to work. Partly out of like curiosity if there's bugs. <laughs> but also partly just because it's so fun to see this stuff move. <laughs> so yeah, okay, that movement works as well. Oh my god, that's so satisfying. <laughs> that moves that way, that moves that way. Okay, what about when one of them can't move? Ah, that's not that situation. Unless I get rid of... Yeah, I can set up. Move you out of the way. So in theory, the L shape and the long one on the left can both move left, but the the square below can't move. This isn't going to work. I haven't tested this. It works. <laughs> okay. Amazing. I might have to put some animation frames in to show that what's happening there, but pretty amazing. Is it like it's, it kind of looks like, oh, they're just suddenly moving for no reason, but no, it's because I've 
I'm nudging them, but I just can't nudge all the way. Okay. Uh, so, trunk mechanic. Trunk mechanic. How's this going to work? So what's going to happen is you're going to press X. So it's going to send your trunk out flying forwards. And your trunk is going to connect whatever it hits. Um, I'm only going to connect to blocks though, not to walls. If, it, if you hit a wall, what should happen? I have some ideas about what should happen if like because I want like extending the trunk and then retracting the trunk to be two separate operations. But then I have thoughts around what should happen if you extend the trunk, the trunk hits something that it can't latch onto, and it just sort of flops onto the ground. Like maybe there's mechanics I can implement that involve that. But what would happen? So that, that does, because one of the things I'd like to do is that after you've extended your trunk, you can still move around and like leave a weird trail of trunk in your path. So there's gonna be like a line drawing aspect to this. Um, extend the trunk and then you walk around leaving a, a trail of line. And then what would the use be of the, tr the unattached trunk just being like laying down? There'd be a purpose. I know what I was going to do with my original idea. My original idea didn't involve an elephant, though. Very different. Uh, did not involve an elephant. Then hit. The problem with an elephant's trunk, with what I was thinking of doing, is the thing I was thinking of doing is that the, the line that you're laying down, the trunk, was something thin. And it would be okay for stuff to pass over the top of that thing. Um, whereas the elephant's trunk is not thin. You can't push boxes over the trunk. That would just feel wrong. I mean, I could, I could make it a thing, but it's, it would feel very wrong. Unless it, I make it like a ghost trunk. <laughs> oh my gosh, that would be weird. Like between the elephant and the the actual end of the trunk, it's just like like magical. I don't know. <laughs> That's too weird. An, an infinitely extending trunk is fine, but <laughs> but that's the, that's not weird. But a magical trunk that things can pass through a ghost trunk that would be too weird. Um. Let's say I just left it solid, so you can't like you can't push anything over the trunk. It's just it's a solid thing, solid object. I also don't want to have to implement, like, let's say you leave your trunk, if you've got a grid like this, and there's a trunk going across like that, and you walk here, I don't want to have to implement bending, where the trunk now goes like that, That's, that would just be a nightmare. Um, so, it would then also be odd if Maybe I should do the ghost trunk. <laughs> that could be the name of the game, the ghost trunk. Because in my original idea, it didn't involve an elephant. What would happen is if you shot your... It was going to be a hook. If you shot your hook, it was a wall, and it hit the, hit the wall that it couldn't penetrate, it would fall on the ground. And then you'd be able to walk over the, your, the rope and then push the hook around. 
which is kind of an interesting idea because then what could you do if, by pushing that hook around and putting it into different places? Uh, hits the ground what's the purpose I guess the purpose could be you could still move it but then how would that work let's say the trunk was a solid object yeah if the trunk's a solid object and it like ends here the elephant trunk and then you walk into it here well now you're going to be standing on your own trunk maybe that's okay maybe standing on your own trunk is fine the boxes is not because you've got legs you can stand on either side of the trunk <laughs> that would be weird but i also i'm i'm terrified of implementing like being able to walk over your own trunk and leave like a crossing and then what happens if you do it again <laughs> uh I guess I could I just not allow it twice, that feels like a bit of a weird restriction. So... So... Does it matter if I can't walk over it? Like, what if I can't... No, I need to be able to walk over it to be able to push the end. Otherwise, the end sitting on the ground is like a completely pointless action. What if I can walk over it, but I just can't cross the trunk over the trunk? That could be allowed. That feel a bit weird. Hmm. If that happens, then what's going to happen? Like, do I push this this way, but my trunk is still attached? It could come in backwards, again, but I'd only be able to push it in one space. Hmm. I want this to be a thing though, where like shooting it and hitting a wall and not attaching to something is like a beneficial thing. At first, that would be like, that's, that's a bad situation. But later on, I'd be like, oh, actually, I can use that to do something. Hmm. What would the elephant do? I can imagine what the elephant would if it had an infinitely long trunk and its trunk hit the wall. Maybe the ghost trunk is the thing to do. Let's make things easier. Ghost trunk. It's like magical. Like dis it disconnects, it floats away, but there's like a magical trail connecting it back to the the elephant <laughs> why not i've already got a magically infinitely extending trunk why not just have the thing that's connecting the trunk back to the elephant be a magical beam of like extended trunkness why not I probably sound like I'm going mad. <laughs> Why can't it just be a magical beam of extended trunkness? <laughs> Not a sentence I expected to ever say in my life. It does allow more interesting options as well. Then you could like push a box onto where the trunk is, but then track the bunk, the, the trunk, and yeah, it sounds way more interesting. Ghost trunk? Ghost trunk. Ghost trunk is happening, I think. Is there, maybe there's another way I could think about it that isn't, it's not a ghost.
I guess like it could be it could be a, still a trunk, as long as the objects that I'm pushing around, it would make sense for them to be pushed. Along. What would that be like? Like another another animal with legs. Hmm. More elephants. Other elephants. No. You don't get elephants that are like shaped like these blocks. <laughs> Doesn't make any sense. You don't get you don't get other animals that are shaped like these blocks. Really, I mean, I probably could twist it. This is the difficult bit where you just have to think about like what mechanics would work and also feel at least a little bit intuitive. At least a little bit. And would give rise to enough interesting stuff to do with them. <laughs> I might have to make this decision. I'm just thinking it might be a best decision to make while I'm in a later. In which case, maybe I just implement the extending now and I figure out the rest of the logic afterwards. Yeah, let's do that. Okay. I'll think about it while I'm making dinner. But for now, I will just implement it in one of the situations. I can just change it. It shouldn't be too hard to switch between the options. Okay, so what I'm thinking is, the other thing is the trunk. I press X, the trunk should fire out forwards. That should be... Easy enough. Let's just implement that then. Um, so no movement is happening. Uh, what should happen if it hits a thing? It doesn't push the thing, it just hits the thing. Okay, that's fine. Um, in which case you can go pretty much anywhere. There's, the action movement is not going to cause movement. At least on the out, outgoing. Okay, so let's just do uh, extension. Okay, extension. So, action, player. Trunk. This is going to be a multiple turn thing. I'm going to do it again and then just like um, have it repeat. It's finished extending. Do I need a separate thing to represent the end of the trunk and the not end of the trunk? Yes, I do, but for now... I'm going to need it. I'm going to need it for sure. So, for now we'll just name it something different. It's fine. Um, so, in the direction that the player in the trunk are, I want to start like extending one each turn. So should I leave a marker on the trunk or on the player? Probably on the trunk, it'll just make it simpler. So I have to propagate along to get to it. But now what I'll do is I'll do, uh, I'm gonna to need to know the direction because I need to retain the direction. Uh, uh, so we need some new objects, which are gonna be like trunk, Oh, I could use the I could use the same objects. They are only ever on the player. Holy moly! Good. Okay, I'm going to use them. I'm not, not going to rename them yet. I'm going to use them and see how it goes. Um, and I'll rename it later when it makes sense. So basically, I guess on the first turn I wanted to do something. In which case I can just do, okay, uh, action. I can get rid of the action player. 
uh, trunk with a trunk rotate right. It's not actually rotating, so I'm going to do the rotation. But no. uh, then a trunk with a. Oh, it's not going to be right. So the, okay, this is the directional bit. Up. Up. Right. Down. Left. Right. Down. Left. And then similarly, I just want to propagate that. So trunk. Trunk. Um, trunk ro uh, trunk with a trunk rotates. It's just going to be the directions again, right? Um, it up with nothing next to it, literally nothing. So no static, no dynamic. This is up only. Up. Like I could do this in one rule, but I want this rule to apply every turn. So might as well just do this. No, oh, what we do? Up. Oh, I want that to go away from there and then pass the, pass it along to the next trunk. Trunk. Trunk rotate up. Okay, that's good. Then same for the other directions. Right. Down. Left. Right. Right up. Down. Left. Now I should have an extending trunk. Right. Oh, I didn't do it again. Also, it didn't work. 139 applies. Yeah. And why didn't this apply? Oh. Whoops. Right. Down. Uh, but I also need to do it again. So after all of these, again. Again, again, again. We're going to clean those up afterwards. Too fast. <laughs> again, interval. Oh, right, because that's just applying over and over again. Okay. Uh, it's not the again interval that's the problem, it's just repeatedly applying the rule. Uh, remove the action. There's like no action, right? No? Is, no, is that a thing? Oh wait, that's not, that's not even the right rule. Hold on, it's this one. And there's no action involved. I don't want to do this every turn. Uh, best way to do that, could, I mean, so I could stop putting actions on the trunk, I guess. Basically, that's applying, then it's applying again immediately. It's just filling in the whole row. So I want the result of this to not match the, the right-hand side of this to not match the left-hand side, which it currently will do. Um, like I, I genuinely could just put an action on that trunk then. I think you use stationary to mean no action, don't you? Yeah. Trunk. Feel amazing. Let's do it anyway, though. You go there, you go there, you go there. Then that ends up being action trunk. Action trunk. Action trunk. trunk. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> I can separate from it, that's fine. Uh, let's make the again into a little bit shorter. Again. 
guess it's twice the speed is for the drive. <laughs> okay. Leave the trunk behind, let me just make more trunk, and then, hey, not what I actually want, okay. And gobble up the trunk as well. Okay, um, at least it extends, that's the thing. Just do the ghost trunk, I'll probably actually... Kind of silly, kind of funny too. What other people are posting? Okie dokie. Um, seems like I'm the only person that like just doesn't do any arts. I just gonna implement all the mechanics with like completely, completely boring squares. It's like a degenerate game. Swing from green square to green square with your red square monkey. Uh, Okay, uh, so extension is done. After extending though, movement needs to be different. Oh, this is gonna be complicated. I'm gonna need to know what's the end of the thing, what's the start of it. I'm gonna have to have separate objects for that, all the connections, and then the end one, for sure. The end one is gonna have multiple states, either it's connected or it's not connected. Yeah, yeah. So that's the extension that works. Not amazingly implemented, but let's let's add more objects. Let's do um because I'm also gonna need to know the direction it's going as well. Let's just go all in. Let's just try and do it all right now. So we've got trunk trunk origin face. I guess that's the, that's the origin of a trunk, is the face. Yellow, and let's do something like... I need to know which direction the face is facing. And now let's just leave face as a yellow square. Um, what do you call the end of the trunk? <laughs> what do you call the end of a loaf of bread? What? Uh, elephant's trunk. The nostril. Elephant's trunk astronomy. Fusion of the nose and upper lip. So weird, isn't it? Um, nasal septum. <laughs> Separates the left and right airways of this cavity. I guess it's just the nostril. Just horizontally between the nostrils. Wait, so do they have nostrils aligned vertically? No. 
like the same as us. I guess just the nostrils. Sure, I'm gonna <laughs> call this the nostrils. That'd be wonderful. Hello. Uh, oh no, somebody's disfigured their elephant. <laughs> Okay, uh, we've got face, nostrils, and then we've got trunk, but like all the various directions the trunk could go. But I think what I want is a trunk marker, which is transparent, and then a trunk direction. I'm not going to like crossing over, so this is fine. Do I want a separate object for different things, or do I want just to represent? the possible ways a path could go, since we're not going to go through it twice. It is convenient to have separate things, we're going to have separate things. From connect up yellow, connect right, Connect down. Uh, change all of these to match the direction. Down. It's much easier to write rules for following along a line if you don't have to have different cases for like going up. It's just if if there's a trunk connect up, you can go up rather than being like if you had separate objects for representing like. A left up connection, a down up connection, and a right up connection. You'd have to like have separate cases for each one of them. Unless you, I suppose you could make properties that contain them. You could say a trunk connect up is a trunk connect left up or a trunk connect. Yeah, I guess either way would work. Um, I'm going to do this one. I'm going to do this way. Da, 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 da. And then. Then we will have to like leave the correct trail. Whoa. Oh yeah, right, okay. I mean there's also gonna be which direction is the nostril going. That's very important, yeah. Nostrils up. So the way I'm gonna represent that for now is with a kind of this shape. Would be the end of the pipe, effectively. Just going to go halfway to the thing for now. For now, this is right. One of the most useful things to do when doing, you know, this kind of work is just to say, well, I'm doing this for now, but I will absolutely. You know, later, although in the real world, uh, have I done this right? This was up, yes, this was right, down. Yeah, in the real world, often those things you say, I'm going to change it later, don't ever get changed. But who cares? It's a game jam, it doesn't matter too much. Who cares? Uh, uh, uh. Yeah, all those. So we want to have some groups. Um, in particular, we want a nostrils to be that or that or that or that, and that can only ever be on its own layer, uh, which can be the same layer as all the other like physical stuff. Cool. Um, I think I'm ever going to want these things on top of each other. In fact, we could group not we could group all the trunk stuff up into one thing. Um, so. Uh, that sounds quite good actually, so I'll get rid of that from there. And I'll call trunk is going to be face or uh, trunk. Hmm, but trunk should be the middle bit of the whole thing. Uh, I'll, I'll make something called trunk all or something. Unless there's a better name. That, oh, I don't know if it's such anatomy, I could get disgusting pictures. Uh, names of the parts of a trunk. Of a, not, not a tree trunk, an elephant's trunk. 
Let me move it onto a different screen. <laughs> Don't want to disturb anyone. Uh, <clears throat> this just page looks like it's supposed to have images in it. Don't think. Okay. Elephant trunk anatomy. Okay, here we go. It's tiny. I can't read the stuff. Oh, this is horrendous. Um, why is that picture so small? It looks like it's got exactly the labels on it that I need. Uh, it says trunk. I don't know if there's different names for the different bits. Okay, whatever. All, I guess, is what I'm going to use. Okay, uh, that's those. And then we've got trunk, trunk all. Yeah, let's do trunk all. Face or trunk or nostrils. That's going to be the thing. And then. Uh, trunk is going to be. Well, I think I, I think I want a separate trunk and a trunk connect. So trunk connect is going to be its own thing, but trunk an object is still going to be an object. Do I have it still? Did I get rid of it. No, I still got it. It's transparent. That's good. That's exactly what I want. Do I want that? Why would I not just use property? Why would I not just group them all up? Maybe I'll just group them all up. And then not call them the trunk connect. Trunk up. I'll, I'll find out later. <laughs> trunk up, trunk right, trunk down, trunk left. That doesn't exist anymore. That is face. Uh, dynamic. Yep. Face is pretty dynamic. Trunk is trunk. Up, trunk right, trunk down, or trunk left. And then we've got everything. That's not going to work anymore, though, because this isn't right anymore. Okay, let me do a find replace. Copy it out into something else. Uh, let's do that. Hmm. Uh, oh, I can't place all of them. I guess it's any trunk followed by a space. I think. Find, replace. Uh, not regular expression. Case sensitive, yep. Place it with face space. Still calling trunk rotate trunk rotate. I guess that's okay. Face is trunk snap with face. Put things into layers. Right, trunk all is going to go here. Got it. I duplicate sections. I tried to duplicate rules. Whoops. Okay, that still works. Cool. Um, Okie dokie. I can still separate from it. That's, that's something I'll change later. That works. Um, However, what I need to do then, instead of doing, so the extension needs to change basically. So I'm currently using that to say which way I'm extending for now. It's, it says rotate, but it's got nothing to do with rotation. Um, 
the face uh well so it's not gonna be a face anymore so maybe i should have a separate turn or i could just say trunk trunk all change this to trunk all right would work oh wait wrong thing so that's always face. It would be trunk all here. Yep, yep, yep. I am definitely missing some faces. There's a face, there's a face, there's a face, 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 face. Any more? Three on each one, I think. Maybe. Yeah, that's right. Okay, cool. Um, well, now the weird thing about that is I'm placing a trunk. Oh, I see, because there's only one on the left, it knows what to do. But I don't actually wanted to do that. I wanted to do a. So when we're going in the up direction, I wanted to place a trunk down and a trunk up oh this is a bit nasty uh, let's just do it anyway trunk up it's okay for one of them to have the action i guess in this case i want it to be trunk left let's make it consistent yeah left trunk right will be trunk up trunk down Right from the left. Hmm. Hmm. Yeah, that's a problem. I can't put them all in the same thing. Um. Yeah. Uh. Those all need to be overlappable. None of them are rigid, so they can be in the same thing. So trunk up, trunk right. Although mixing collision groups is often what ends up leading to confusing bugs that I don't understand how to fix. But whatever, I'm doing it. Uh, Trump Rotate cannot go on the same layer though now. So that, you got you on the debug layer, it's fine. Um, this should not be Trump All, it should be face and nostrils. Yeah, uh, comma. Apparently that's fine, it's probably not gonna be fine, is it? Hey. I'm shooting a laser. Um, I need to change this. This is not a good way of doing this. Yeah, I really need to change this. Because the nostrils are basically on the face at the beginning. So the nostrils and the face also can't be on the same space. They are the same, they are together. They are one and the same. I could treat that as just separate state of the face maybe that's sensible do i want to be able to walk up to something and stick to it i guess it would be weird if you couldn't i walked up to a, a block I mean, no, I think you should have to extend the stick. That's fine. I don't need to install. Hmm. The fact something else I was thinking of doing, though. Uh, all the hard decisions have to happen now. I put the two things in the same place. The problem with putting the nostrils on the face, this is such a weird <laughs> sentence to be saying. The problem with putting the nostrils on the face is that I have to make the nostrils follow the face at all times. Otherwise the nostrils will become disconnected from the face. That's just annoying to have to move them together constantly.
Not that annoying though, I could do it in the same rules that I'm already using. Does it make sense from a implementation perspective? I don't know. I think I'm going to take a break. Take a break. Have dinner soon and then come back. Maybe like seven, seven, I think. Yeah. I haven't gone for four hours, 20 minutes apparently. Is that as long as my time has gone? Oh, wow. Okay. I wanted to get all the mechanics done in eight hours. I mean, I can like, so because it's a 48 hour uh, jam, but over, over a week, I can just like, I can stop my time in there and go do all this stuff and then come back to it and restart it. Okay, I'm gonna take a break um, and come back to it and then we'll do the, the trunk mechanics. All right, cool, bye.